All right, we are recording. Hi, Lucelis. Hi, Carlos. Okay, and the Bomb Brownies is here. Karen is here. Sweet Potato, Cynthia. Um, so for those of you that did turn in your homework, um, there was like six of you all now, and then about seven now. You should have received an email with a link um, to your uh, Visa gift card for that hundred dollars. If you have not, um, we'll resend those out. Earl, did you get yours? Yes, ma'am. We did. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. And then if you guys have any issues um, with downloading the card or the card number, Nancy, we sent you your um, your gift card also. Please let us know if you have any issues with those cards. Um, where It's a new platform that we just um, co are collaborating with. And so we just want to do our due diligence that they work. And so um, just to recap really quickly, please. Um, house rules, put your name in the comment box to check yourselves in. Uh, we will have like two or three polls um, just to let you all know. Keep yourselves on mute for the courtesy of others. And we'll do a quick, quick recap of last week's session. Um, we went through how to properly set up your tech, how to create a business manager account, create an ad account. Uh, there's a lot of accounts. Um, navigate the various uh, custom views in your business manager and ad account. Um, we also, Stacy walked us through how to create, install, and add the Facebook pixel in, in key places. And then we kind of touched on um, your setting up um, your conversion events. And I know we were kind of um, pressed on time. So uh, this part two will cover, and Stacy can, can reiterate some of this, we'll cover strategies and then how to really implement um, properly implement uh, those Facebook ads. Did I miss anything, Stacy? Nope, we are good. Yeah, we're gonna talk about creative today and we're gonna also go through and talk about how to set up campaigns. Awesome, awesome. So I will turn it over to you. I will stop sharing my screen and then you can start sharing yours. Perfect. Cool, hey y'all, happy Monday. I hope that you are well. Um, I am excited to present part two today. And so I, um, based on how things went last week, um, we ended up getting a lot of questions about the tech and that kind of slowed us down into getting to this, to the second half of part one. So today we technically have part two, as well as the end of part one to finish today. And so my thought is to go straight through the entire um, presentation and then have time for questions at the end. And so I wanna do that for a couple of reasons. One, I wanna keep us on time. Um, two, I wanna make sure that we get through everything. And three, I wanna make sure that we have a clean recording of all of the setup and everything like that so that you can go back and watch it. So um, this session is being recorded. And typically what I find when we get to the, to the part where we're building campaigns and how to do stuff in there, um, it's really, really important to just like, you know, kind of watch me do it and then go back to the recording as you're doing it yourself and go through. If you want to walk through with with it with me, that's fine. Um, some people did that last week. But just know that sometimes this stuff gets a little, um, you might have to come back, just come back and watch the recording anyway. So I'm going to do my best to really explain what different things mean, going to walk you through some things, and then we are going to um, have time for questions at the end. So let me go ahead and get started so that we can keep on time. And feel free to drop questions in the chat. I'll be making sure that um, I come back and I look at uh, questions and everything that comes through. So. Um, make sure that my, okay, so my screen is presenting. Okay, perfect. Okay, y'all, so let's definitely pick up. Um, this is where we're going to be talking about some campaign strategies and creative and things like that. So let's jump in. So we're picking up here where we have some campaign ideas specifically for restaurants. And I have a couple listed here, but I'm going to go through and give you some examples and ideas of what I mean by each of these. And then we're gonna also look at some actual ads that are effective. So um, right now, let's just definitely focus on strategy. So 
the first type of campaign that you can run or some ideas for you to run, it are some um, run ads to get either reservations for specific type of holidays. Um, you can do things like gift giving, for example. So for example, we have Thanksgiving coming up. And so maybe you're running campaigns to get people to book their spaces for, for Thanksgiving. I know that you know, some people like to go out, um, you know, to eat for Thanksgiving, what we have coming up in Q4. You might even also have someone that says like they want to take the, the take the cooking off of their plate. So maybe I know that um, I think Boston Market does this. I know that they will prepare like a whole Thanksgiving meal for you. You can pick it up and you're good to go. And so if you're thinking about what you're going to be doing in Q4, major holidays, we definitely have a lot of great, you know, a lot of major holidays that are coming up that people would actually be wanting to use restaurant services for. So start to think about what are your main money makers for, uh, for Q4, and that's really going to help you to plan your campaigns. Another idea for some seasonal campaigns is gift giving. So when I used to be, I used to work at Zappos for those who missed the first section. So I used to work at Zappos and I led paid social there. So we were always doing different kinds of campaigns. And one of the things that we did was curated gift guides. And so we would do gift guides for like, you know, gifts for people under $50, gifts for your favorite foodie, gifts for your, out, you know, your outdoor lover in your life, right? And so maybe there are some gift ideas that you could actually have. Maybe it's a selection of desserts, maybe a certain type of food, Maybe it's a gift card. Maybe, you know, people who, if you have a lot of repeat customer, excuse me, a lot of repeat customers, maybe you want to encourage people to buy gift cards for them and stuff like that. So maybe it's something like five gift ideas for your favorite foodie. And, you know, you can put on there, you know, your gift cards, your, you know, different things that you can do. But maybe are there some other ideas that you may have that you want to give people so that they're walking away with a full picture of some gift ideas. And then you can run ads to that gift guide. Another thing with things that are seasonal or more so, I guess this may be not super, super seasonal, but it could be, um, is your recurring events. So maybe you have happy hour, maybe you have Thursday nights or ladies nights, maybe you have, um, you know, national pancake day or something like that. And that correlates with what you do. I know that for me, like I go out to eat a lot. I go out to restaurants a lot. I go out with my friends a lot. And so I'm always looking on Instagram to see what's going on on Thursday night, what's going on on Wednesday night. Right. But you can absolutely run ads that specifically say like, you know, tonight's ladies night, bring this coupon in to get, you know, 10 percent off your first drink or something like that. So you can get very, very specific with these and don't think that you have to run only one campaign. And so I want you to kind of start with one. Right. I don't want you to, to overwhelm you. I want to make sure that you have. um Kind of are starting and starting someplace. So that's some seasonal campaigns that I think are important. The next type of campaign I would definitely say are promotions slash coupons. And these are things that you may do, they have going on throughout the entire year. So with pro, um, promotions and coupons, maybe you're running ads encouraging them to bring in a coupon to get a specific deal or a discount. I think that this could be highly effective, especially if your goal is to get people to come into your stores. And so you can run things like, um, <clears throat> You know, a KFC had this big bucket deal and we're going to see a little a KFC ad later. And it was just like, you know, um, bring this ad in and you get two for one, a specific two for one promotion. Maybe it's you, you know, bring this ad, in, bring a, you know, bring this ad and they can take a screenshot of it on their phone. They can send you a message, something like that. And they could come in and they get a special coupon or a special promotion. Um, and that also helps with tracking. So if you're wanting to track to see like how many people actually saw the ad and actually came in, which is something that counts as an offline conversion, then that's something that you'd be able to track where you're like, okay, this person used only this coupon code is specific to Facebook and Instagram ads. And that's how you know, right? So like it's Thanksgiving, you know, 2021 slash, you know, Facebook. Right. So that way, you know, on your internal tracking that this specific coupon came from an ad. <clears throat> Other things that you can do, something that is definitely beneficial for you if you are, uh, if you have a lot of conversations via DM or uh, direct messages or WhatsApp or whatever app you're using to communicate, you can run ads directly to your message to, to, to have people send you a message. So you can, and we're going to see an example of this later, but you can say something that's like, hey, like, you know, um, take it to take advantage of this deal, send us a, send us a DM on Facebook. Um, to place your order, send us, a, you know, send us a DM on Facebook or send us a DM on Instagram. So you can run ads where the call to action 
is to actually send you a message on um, on Messenger. And that definitely helps to have more of an in-depth conversation. This could definitely be something that also works for catering as well. Like if you want people to send you a specific information via DM, um, they can start to send you that information and you can really start to get an idea of what they need. Like, you know, what's the size of the event? What's the, um, how many people are going to be there? What, you know, are there any dietary restrictions? Like these kind of questions that you ask people over and over and over again, these kinds of things can be automated. Um, you, if you are running a lot of DMs and you're finding it's overwhelming, you can do things like mini chat. There are chat, what they're, what they're called as chat bots. And you can program these, bo these bots to have specific responses or to ask for specific questions. So like, you know, gathering the order, the, the order size of something is something that, you know, is, is pretty easy to be able to ask in an automated way. So that's DMs, that's messages. And then you also have leads for catering. That's another potential uh, money maker for you if you are catering events, whether that's office parties. There's a ton of office parties that are going to be in Q4. Whether that's um, you know you're catering festivals or anything like that, right? You can really absolutely use ads to generate leads specifically for your business. Whether that's weddings, whatever the actual um, you know the piece of the catering business that you are looking to promote during this time of year, that's definitely something that you can do. So you can encourage people to, you know, fill out a form, for example. We're going to walk through how to um, have forms on Facebook that people can set, fill out. But what if it's someone filling out a form? And uh, an example I like to use is not a food-specific example, but um, I have had laser hair removal before, and I it's one of those things that I've been meeting to reach out to get the pricing for. And so I saw an ad pop up that said, hey, do you want the pricing for, you know, um, for laser hair removal. And I their 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 call to action was me to fill out a form. And so I didn't even have to leave Facebook. I had a form, there was a form there that asked me for my phone number, my email address. Um, and I think that it also asked me for my location so they could send me information about the closest location to me. And what I got from that was I got an email saying, like, hey, you know, here's the pricing that you asked for. And here's a link to book a, you know, book a um, book a session at your close location. I got people they were calling me, so they were calling me, you know, uh, trying to get me to book a book an appointment, ask me if I had any questions, things like that. And so you can absolutely do those kinds of things um, with Facebook as well. If you're trying to generate leads for your catering business or another arm of your business, they may more so need leads rather than those direct one-to-one -one, um, campaigns. And so I want to know in the chat. So let me know in the chat, what are some campaigns that you're considering for Q4? I know that y'all have been starting to talk about this in your um, in your group, but let's talk a little bit about what are some of these things? Are there some things on this list that you are find that you feel that are really interesting to you that are aligned with the campaigns that you potentially would be running um, this season? So let me know in the chat. I'm going to keep going and we'll keep, um, we'll, we'll talk about it. Um... Now, tell me a little bit about what you mean by that, Nancy. So during this whole session and these few weeks and talking to you and everything, um, I ended up just focusing on one idea, which the campaign would be to put the popsicles in a basket, which I have been doing, but I've never, ever marketed that way. I was just kind of what I had in order mm -hmm. to do the, the delivery happen. It wasn't even a concept until now. I'm like, oh, my God, I've been using a basket, which is la canasta which is a very mexican thing to do let me go ahead and brand it and uh promote it that way and give it light in life and so i'm kind of excited about the whole thing yeah definitely i can definitely see see that being positioned as gifts um yeah. for this time of year right mm -hmm. like and you can even you know say that it's a unique gift right like you right. know if you want to give somebody something that's not of the ordinary or i'm mm -hmm. someone who is a terrible at gift giving let me tell you like unless you tell me exactly what you want i i'm completely lost or if i get an idea that's like oh here's a gift for somebody that has everything <laughs> right like you know or, or a unique gift that you can give someone so i could definitely see that being a, gr a good idea to run mm -hmm. some ads to. And I think um, Javon Brownies has their brownie gift set, right, Earl? Yes, I believe that's right. Um, Dana did it um, last week while I was traveling. Okay. Yeah. So it's like different flavors of their brownies in a little gift box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those. I think that those are definitely great things to run ads to because then you can really kind of start to talk to people 
who want to give out unique gifts and even people like, you know, office gifts, things like that. Those I'd actually be a good idea. When I used to work at Zappos, we used to get a ton of gifts. And so it was always, you know, trying to get in touch with our HR people or our campaign heads to try to figure out how can you, you know, we get, give your, you know, have gifts and stuff for your employees or things like that. So those are definitely really good ideas um, as far as running some campaigns too. And then we had one more. It was a seasonal campaign. It is, let me see where did it go. It is a farm to table harvest dinner. So driving traffic for those that want to make a reservation to this um, very specific dinner. Would that be yeah. one? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I could definitely see you saying like, you know, um, bringing the farm, farm from farm to table this Thanksgiving, right? Like, you know, farms to farm to table this thing, this Christmas or whatever holidays coming up, right? You can definitely talk to people who want to have a unique experience for dinner, um, and definitely, you know, put or or those people who are just like, you know, they are time strapped and they really, you know, they they've they've, they've done Thanksgiving dinner every year. And every year, like I know that this happens in my family, every year they say we're going to cater it this year. And it just never happens because what? We just fall back into our old patterns. <laughs> but, you know, if you are able to get ahead of those kinds of things and start running campaigns early enough for when people are starting to think about, OK, what are we going to do for dinner this year? Do we want to cook again? Right. Like that. Those are the kinds of people that you want to be specifically speaking to in your ads. Um, let me see what okay, Jeanette, I'm reading yours. What is the product? Can you tell me a little bit more about the product? Because then that that would help me to um to best kind of give a little bit more advice there. Because I think I'm just lost on what the actual product is, and so I'm kind of drawing a blank. Yeah, pupusas is a Salvadorian dish, and is a corn stuffed tortilla, naturally gluten free, and can be stuffed pretty much with anything. And we pretty much cover any dietary needs, you know, like vegan, vegetarian and you know meatless mm -hmm. uh, so right now my target is in is the american market so it's mm -hmm. not well known yet mm -hmm. and um so i'm trying to focus in more about educational part for for the moment mm -hmm. and, and be more um a specific targeting of about what is a pupusa mm -hmm. and, yeah yeah, I think I, I I like the um I like the bit about the educational piece, but I do also think that sometimes we can try to over educate people instead of trying to sell to them, right? Like, I mean, you know, like mm -hmm. if, at the end of the day, we want someone to come in and try it. And so mm -hmm. maybe it's instead of always focus on instead of all the content, especially in the ads, like I wouldn't go that way. You go the education I would say that for your organic page, organic Instagram, that would be a good idea to you know educate. So that way people can kind of go to your page and check it out and see what it is. Um, but I think that with your ads, it's about talking about how it's gluten-free, talking about how it fits with different dietary restrictions. Um, and so I think that that more so is the focus instead of making it all about education. And maybe it's about, maybe you're talking to people who like to try new things, right? Because some people, everybody doesn't like to try new food, but some people, you might, you have a lot of people out there who are foodies who like to try different things. And so they may not necessarily need to just be educated about why it's, you know, why it's unique or why they should try it. Maybe they just need to be invited in to actually try something unique and fun. Um, and actually, you know, try something from different cultures that, you know, so leaning into to, to those kinds of people who really do like to try new experiences and like to try new foods. Um, maybe it's even getting some influencers to come in and try it. If you if you have, you know, budget for influencers or you know any on the rise influencers that may want to come in and try it and just give you their experience about trying something, you know, completely new. Um, so that's that's kind of what I would I, I would say there. Um, so but I would invite people in to try it. Yeah, I'll add to to that. I, actually, I just went to to go see Jeanette last week, and um, the pupusas are great. So, the maybe it could be a promotion, right, Jeanette? Of um, especially for gift giving, um, or for someone that wants to try a gluten free option for Thanksgiving, right? You get a, a coupon or a coupon code that says try us for the first time um, and then you get you know whatever percent off and then you mail it to them or um, or they pick it up whichever um, she's in Atlanta also so uh, yeah 
Yeah. No, I mean, I think that that I think that that definitely makes sense, right? I think you know it could be something where people come in, like if someone's coming in for your bestseller, right? If you have an ad about your bestseller, maybe the promotion is like you know bring in this ad and we'll give you a free pupusas or you'll get you know twenty percent off to try something new, something like that, right? Where you can kind of bundle those things together with if your people are coming in for the bestseller, but then also like hey, this is also available and we'd love for you to try it. Um, so you've given someone like some kind of promotion or something to get them to, to incentivize them to try it because then once they do try it, they're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is awesome. I got to, you know, tell everybody, I got to tell people about this. But I think, you know, using the ad to either highlight your um, bestseller and then tying that with a promotion to be able to get the pupusas, that actually might be a good idea to get people to one, come in for what they, what they're familiar with and what they actually, you know, know what it is but then also incentivizing them with like kind of an upsell or like you know an additional you know additional kind of making the the additional revenue off of that one sale because they are coming in and getting a discount to try something new yeah um so all well it seems like i need to do like a segment of you know different promotions you know targeting vegan vegetarians and you know in different areas that makes sense. I would definitely suggest that. Yeah. Because you're going to have people who are like, I'm looking for something to new to try and I don't really care about the dietary restrictions. Mm -hmm. But then you also might have people who are specifically like, I want to find something that's really yummy. That's for vegans or that's gluten free or, you know, that kind of thing. And so you can absolutely run different campaigns or, it's you know, have different ads health. running. Right. Yeah. And it could be the same image. It could absolutely be the same image. And then maybe what we're going to see, you will see examples of what ads look like in a second. But then maybe the headline is just like, you know, something yummy and fresh for vegans, something yummy and fresh for gluten free for people who are gluten free. Right. So just calling them out specifically in the copy and using the same images is something that you can definitely do. Write that oh. down, Jeanette. Something oh, yummy. <laughs> And yeah, and so yeah, watch the recording, you know, that because that's in there too. But let's um let's keep going because we definitely have a lot to get through today. Thank you. Um, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, so here, so now we've talked about a couple different ideas for some campaigns, and we're gonna see some some actual ads and stuff in a minute. I want to let you know what you actually need to launch a campaign, and we're breaking this down in two parts. This is the first part of the more. So I like to break it down into like organization and launching the campaigns. And so this first piece is like, what do I actually need to prepare ahead of time in order for me when I go into business manager to build my campaigns? I have everything I need, because the last thing you want to do is be trying to track track down copy or track down, you know, ad creative or anything like that when you're actually trying to build your campaigns. So these are things that you want to put together before. So the first thing is your campaign brief. And there is a campaign brief template that is linked in your resource guide, the part two of your resource guide, which you have not received yet. I have it ready. I'm just making, I haven't sent it over to Karina yet because I want to make sure anything we go through today, if there's anything I missed, I add that resource in there. So it's ready to go. You'll just get it after this presentation. But the campaign brief, this is what I use to organize my campaigns and what I teach my students. I use this because I, when I was at Zappos, I was pushing out 50 to 75 different campaigns every month. That's a lot. That's that's a whole, whole lot. Y'all will probably maybe doing, you know, a couple campaigns a month, maybe like two to three different campaigns per month. So I like to use a campaign brief. And one, it came, it, it was born out of necessity for myself, my, for my sanity to be able to keep all the my details together. But then I started to realize that having this one document that has everything I need on it, um, while to have it next to me while I'm building my ad campaigns helps me to move a lot faster and to not get kind of lost in the, in the, in the sauce of building things. So a campaign brief is just a Google doc that has just like different information. And you actually, within the resource guide, there is also a walkthrough video of the campaign brief. So I'm not going to go through it today because there is a video that goes with it. Um, so you have your campaign brief that has all your, helps you to organize your campaigns. The other things you need are your creative assets. And so um, I'm going to talk to you in a second about your creative assets and how to create really good ones. But this would be your still images. This is your videos, things like that, that you actually need to be able to launch the campaign. The other last thing that you need is ad copy. And so the ad copy that breaks down into headlines as well as body copy. So keep in mind that while your image is definitely important in helping people to stop scrolling and to capture their attention, you also have a whole a headline and you have body copy to give people more information. And I like to say that because last week we were, I was looking through some creative 
Um, and sometimes business owners try to put, we try to put all the information into the ad. So we put our phone numbers, we put, you know, our um, call to actions, all of that stuff into the creative, but you don't actually have to do that because you want to keep in mind that you do actually have copy that is going to go with your ads to help further explain what you're talking about. So it's not just only the image that matters. Um, you also have copy that is what you, that that's going to help you to um, explain more in detail of what you're trying to communicate to your to to the people who are consuming your ads. And so these are um, some principles of how do we create ads that convert. And so the role of your ad creative is to one capture the attention of your ideal customers. And it's to just take them a to get them to take the next step, which could be going to your landing page to check out your promotion. It could be filling out a form. It could be sending you a DM, or it can even be coming into your restaurant or coming to your location. So the ad creative again is to stop people from scrolling because that's when people are going to see the ads. They're going to be scrolling. We want people to stop, but then we also want to make sure that we take them to the next step. We don't need to give them every single detail in our ad. We really just need to capture their attention and give them enough information that makes them want to go to the next step, which is either coming in, sending us a DM, going to our landing page if you have a promotion there somehow, placing an online order, something like that. Whatever that next step is, what we want to make sure that that they are um, told to do. And so you want to create ads that what like that capture attention. You have two seconds to really capture someone's attention on social. So your image, your headline, and the first two seconds of your video, for example, if you're doing video ads, which I highly recommend, is definitely something that you need to focus on capturing the attention in that first two seconds. And now you don't do this by doing anything spammy or, you know, or salesy or anything like that. You do it by really sparking people's curiosity. And so, uh, and we're, so that's the first principle is we're really like focus on sparking curiosity, right? Like you, that first couple seconds is to capture someone's attention and get someone to stop. Um, we also need to give people the information that they need to make it a decision. So we want to make it an easy decision. So if you're running ads, for example, to talk about your hop, your happy hour promotions, make sure you give them a time, make sure you, so that they know some people's happy hour ends at seven, some people's happy, happy hour ends at five, right? Like just give them the information to so that they can say like, okay, I know I'm going in for happy hour. It's over at seven. Maybe even briefly touch on the specials that you have. Like if you have a specific special for your happy hours, 20% off of everything or, you know, buy one, get one free cocktail, something like that. Those are important details for people to know because it helps them to make a decision about am I coming in or am I not? Same thing for, for if you're running lead campaigns, if you're trying to get um, details for your catering, stuff like that, right? Like if you have a specific delivery area, you don't need to run ads outside of your delivery area, right? So you wanna make sure that we know, like, you know, you can say delivering to this area and we'll talk about audiences um, when we get through. But that's one of the um, things there is give people the, enough information that they make it to make it an easy decision. Again, you don't need to overload with people with all the information, right? Like you don't need to give them every, you know, a detail about when your restaurant was founded, all of, you don't need to list every different type of cuisine you have. But if you do like, for example, have happy hour items that are great for vegetarians or great for vegans, that's important for someone to know because maybe they are a vegan and they struck, they go to happy hour and they can never find anything outside of a salad that they can eat. You know, and so those kinds of details are important, but you don't need to give them every single detail that they would need to make a purchasing decision because they still do need to come in, right? They still do need to uh, to, to come in through the door or fill out the form or something like that. So all of this stuff kind of works together. The third piece is focus on one magnetic message. And I like to say magnetic messaging because magnetic messaging pulls people towards you and it also repels people who are not for you so and i know i keep um, picking on vegans for example it's just an easy example but like if your restaurant only serves vegan food then we need you know say that <laughs> like you know you don't need people coming in if they are you know looking for other options that are not vegan food right and so focusing on one specific message as we were talking a little bit earlier like you can say you know uh the perfect food for vegans or you can say the perfect food for um for gluten-free or you can say have a gluten-free thanksgiving you know stuff like that or have gluten-free options at your thanksgiving for those people who are trying different diets this year so those are kinds of things that you can do, but you want to make sure that you're focusing on one message, because if you're saying, you know, if you're trying to push everything into an ad, you're going to confuse people and a confused buyer does not buy. Right. So 
And it's so it's okay to have multiple ads. It's okay to have the exact same ad creative and you're changing the headline to say one headline calls out vegans, one headline calls out foodies, one headline you know calls out the different kinds of things, right? So you can absolutely do that. And so I would say like if you're going to run, say you have happy hour specials and you offer catering and you offer online orders, you have one ad that talks about happy hour. You have another ad that talks about catering and then you have another ad that talks about online orders. And this could be as simple as a copy change. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an exhaustive, um, you know, search for creative. Your copy, and that's one of the things why I want to hit on that these things all work together. Your copy could be absolutely what you use to call out different types of messaging. And then the last piece here is you want to make it actionable, meaning we have to tell people what to do next. We can't just expect them to go to our site and reserve, you know, make a reservation for Christmas if we don't tell them to do that, right? We can't expect them to stop by for happy hour if we don't tell them to do that. So we always want to make sure that we're telling people what to do next. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, but this all goes, I've all distilled all of this down into my hot ads framework. And what hot stands for is um, hook, open, and tell. And so let's go into the framework and so that way I can give you a little bit more um, information about how to think about your ad creative and the copy that goes with it, because there are proper ways to do this. It's not just, a, and, and, and I want you to reframe your mind from thinking about it like organic marketing, like things that you post on, on Instagram for the feed, those things are not going to operate in the same way as ads, meaning one, you don't need hashtags and ads, right? So those kinds of things are more so just like extra things that you can do if you want, like if you have a really cool hashtag, but it's not something that's going to impact your visibility. Um, those kinds of things. So this framework applies to every different to every part of your ad from the creative to the copy. And the and it's, it's really kind of what you're going to talk about, what you're going to talk about is the messaging, but this is more so how you're going to talk about it. So if we have one message where we're trying to talk to people who are gluten-free and we're trying to get them to um, to book a, a gluten-free Thanksgiving, the, we're still going to use so the way that we communicate that is going to have us the same structure. So let's go into each of different things. So let's talk about the hook first. So the hook, as I mentioned, you have two seconds to capture someone's attention on social. And that first few seconds is what you're going to use to capture that person's attention. So that is what's called the hook. And so the way that you hook people is by asking them a qualifying question or like talking about a pain point and a desire. So you'll see some examples on the screen that I'm going to go through in a second. But you want people to say, yes, this is me or no, this is not me right away. So you want people to either pay attention or to disqualify themselves and keep scrolling. So, for example, if you're calling out like, you know, vegans, if I'm not vegan, then I'm going to keep scrolling. Right. Like, you know, and that's OK. All right. With you, you can attract different types of people with your different ad creative. You don't have to make one ad specifically for everybody um, because then it's going to resonate with nobody. So it's really the most cru one of the most crucial parts of your ad, because if people don't stop scrolling and you don't capture their attention, they're not going to pay attention to what you have to say. They're not going to pay attention to the message. And so here are some questions to ask. Like, for example, this could be applied to headlines. This could be applied to your body copy. And this could be applied if you have a video, for example, where you're maybe a video where you're, you are talking, a video of an influencer talking, something like that. So you can ask people like, are you sick of bland cafeteria food at work? Maybe you're targeting people who in the area who in the area want to come visit your place for lunch. Um, maybe you can say something like, "Want do you want to enjoy your Thanksgiving without having to cook anything? So this is specifically talking to someone whose pain point is having to cook for Thanksgiving and their desire is to be able to enjoy their meal without having to do all the extra work. Another type of um, uh, uh, frame is like to tell people to stop doing something that they don't want to do and to do this instead. So stop eating frozen pizza every night, get healthy, delicious meals delivered to your door every week. Like if you have maybe a grocery delivery type of um, service, um, you can ask people if they've been struggling something and do they want a transformation. So have you been struggling to trying to uh, have you been trying to save money to get to get out more while saving money? Have you are you struggling to plan the food for your office part for your office Christmas party? Um, or are you struggling to deal with all the dietary restrictions for your office party? These are very specific messages. And notice how each of these has something very specific that is asking, right? It's very, it's focused on one message. I'm not saying like, are you sick of the cafeteria food at work? And do you also want to book a party? Do you want to book, um, you know, a wedding? 
right? With food for your wedding, right? You don't need to put all of that into the same thing. You really just need to pick one message and focus on that and then see how that does. And then you can actually start to move on to incorporate different messaging. So that's the hook. And then this, this is just the first piece. So there are three pieces of a really good ad. And so the first piece, now that we've captured people's attention, the next step is to dig deeper into their pain points. So to open their minds to what's possible. That's what the O stands for. Because a lot of times if we think about there is a gap between where someone's at now, the pain point they're experiencing, and the ultimate transformation that they want to get. Your restaurant and your service is, good, is what fills the gap. And so we need to let them know, we need to open people's minds to what's possible. So we speak directly to the goal or the ultimate transformation that they want to experience. Um, you, you're, you're taking people on a journey from where they're at to where they're gonna to to where they want to be, which is experience a transformation. And your business has the solution. So you don't want to overload with people with information because remember the job is to just take them to get the next step. But at the same time, we definitely need to give people enough information to um, let them know that we know where they're at and that we can we are the solution that can help them to get to where they need to go. So here are some examples of how you open people's minds to what's possible. So you're digging deeper into a to, to a pain point. So like, why are they experiencing this? So it could be something like there are never any good vegan options at work. For example, if you have a great vegan menu and someone maybe they work in a hospital and the food in the hospital is, you know, only has two vegan options and they both suck. Right. So maybe you're targeting people who do work at that local hospital and are sick of those kinds of food, but they also happen to be vegan and they want to be able to go and have a really good vegan meal. And so digging deeper into the pain point is helping them understand like, yeah, I know there aren't any really good vegan options for you. And you know, that sucks. <laughs> right. So another way that you can do this is talking about the transformation that they want to experience. And so this relates to every, most people, a lot of people want more time, more money or more happiness. So these are kind of good little buckets to think about when you're thinking about the ultimate transformation someone wants to um, receive. And so for example, he may say something like, how much time and sanity would they save by outsourcing dinner this year, right? Like if we, it could be even something where you pull up some fun fact about how, you know, people spend an average of, I don't know, 60 hours a week preparing just for one day, just preparing for Thanksgiving. That's completely made up. Please don't use that, right? But it could be something like that. Um, one thing that I talk about when I talk to business owners about Facebook ads is I'm like, how much you, the, the average business owner is spending about four hours a week creating content. So if you add that up, it's about 200 plus hours a year that you're spending on just creating something new. And so Facebook ads have the ability to, for you to drive traffic to things for ever, right? You can take one blog post that you created two months ago, you can run ad traffic to it and it can just run, it can get traffic 24 seven. So this is what I mean by opening people's minds to what's possible because while yes, they may think like, yes, on the surface level, I know that outsourcing dinner is actually going to free up my time. But dig into that a little bit. What could you be spending your time doing instead of uh, instead of focusing on Thanksgiving? Maybe instead of being the person who's in the kitchen making sure the rolls are ready, everything's already ready for you. And all you have to do is sit there and enjoy your glass of wine and enjoy your holiday. Those are the kinds of things that you can use to open people's minds to what's possible so that they can start to understand that, yeah, like if I do invest in the solution, then I can absolutely get to where that transformation is. Because again, people are, they're at, they're, they're, they're if you're thinking about it, like kind of like a bridge, they're, on, they're at one side and they want to get to the other side, but they may not necessarily see all the steps in the middle because all they're seeing is the transformation that they want. Um, and then another way that you can do this is by demonstrating your expertise. So if you've served, like if you have a, a you know a good amount of people that you served at your restaurant, like if you're like, hey, we you know we sent out, uh, we saved a, a hundred families, um, you know, a lot of time and money last Thanksgiving by outsourcing their thanks by outsourcing their Thanksgiving meal. Whether you've been in business for a long time, maybe you're a family-owned restaurant and you've been around for fifty years, right? Those kinds of things are important to people. Um, if you have customer testimonials, like maybe you and you have one that fits with what you're talking about. So maybe you do have a testimonial from someone that was like, oh, my goodness, I, you know, bought this gift for my friend. And, you know, it was a very unique gift. It was the popsicles in the bucket and they, they just kind of in the basket and she loved it. Um, and it was so unique and everybody just raved about how unique the gift was. Right. Those kinds of things are important to help people to um, understand. One is social proof. People like to see that other people have bought into something before they buy into it. But it all 
also helps to paint more picture about how you are the expert and it helps you helps them to open their minds to what's possible. Like, oh yeah, I, I do want to be that person that's known as giving the fun, interesting, cool gifts, right? Um, so those are kinds of things that you can do. If you have some, you know different locations, if you have certain number of events that you've done, if you have you know weddings that you've done, for example, like we've done 50 weddings this year, something like that, right? Those things are important. If you have relevant promotions, any pertinent details to really help them to get the next take the next step. So that's what we're doing when we're opening people's minds to what's possible. <clears throat> And then the last thing is tell. So the T stands for tell. And this is when you're telling them what to do, AKA this is your call to action. So again, it's not enough to just capture people's attention. So you like, you hook people and then you talk about, you open their minds to what's next. You can't just leave people hanging. You want to tell people what to do next, right? So if you want to be able to outsource, you know, to, to, um, to experience that, freedom of having all the food ready for you, you know, packaged in in a great in a way that is going to make sure your food is nice and fresh on Thanksgiving, then you want to take the next step by filling out this form. Right. So we have to always tell people what to do next. And your call to action should be stated in your video. So if you're creating videos, you should always say, like, you know, take the next step and do this, or here's the call to action. This is definitely super important in your copy. So we're always telling people in our copy to take the next step. And then Facebook has a, a built in call to action buttons that you can include with your ads, which we're going to see in a little bit. So here are some examples. So, you know, these are the, the ones at the top, the bold is more so the structure. And then the bottom is just an example. So you can say, like, take the first step towards the ultimate goal by insert call to action. So claim this special offer by giving us your email address. Um, sign up now to get a 20% off coupon on your next order. Show us, you know, um, send us a DM to get a quote for your event. Show us this, show us this DM and we'll, and you'll get a special deal at, at the register. Something like that, right? Where you can actually make sure you're telling people what to do next. But also, Stacey, also mm -hmm. making sure that your call to action is in your POS system, that your call to action, that you let your employees know that you're you're running this ad and, and where to find things as well. Because sometimes it does get lost. Um, we don't communicate it properly to our staff. And so making sure that besides the tell, there's that additional, you know, uh, call to action for you all as well. Yeah, that's definitely a great point. One thing you can do is you can print the ads out, right? Like if you take like, you know, just open up a Google Doc or something and take, you know, screen captures of the ads, you can put that on the put put it on your computer so people can know like these are the specific ads that are currently running right now. Um, you know, so definitely making sure that you're communicating to your staff for sure about what people are going to have to do um, when they come in. All right, so here's some tips for finding ad creative, because I know sometimes we're just like, oh my gosh, where do I find this stuff? And so here are some things that you can, um, that, that about where to find good creative. So influencer content, influencers are very hot right now. They are really, really good at being able to tell stories. That's the thing about that influencers are great at being able to build an audience and they're able to tell stories. And so whereas the business owner, we may think like, let me just give people the details about, you know, um, this type of this new type of food that we want people to try. An influencer may come in, they may try it and they may actually have a story that ties to this particular type of food or this makes me, this reminds me of a specific food that me and my mom used to make when we were younger, you know, something like that. It really gives you back that vibe of being very com comfy, cozy, comforting food. So these are things that influencers are really, really good at being able to tell stories. And they're really good at being able to kind of like communicate in the way that their audience best um, is going to receive a message. Because sometimes it's hard for us as the brand or as the business owner to be able to communicate with, um, you know, to speak the language of our audience, because we're so close to the business and we see, and I always tell people all the time, you are the only person that sees every single one of your posts that go out. Right. You are the only person that knows your business ins and out. Your clients do your customers do not know the intricacies of your business. They know that they have a problem and that they want to solve it, like they're hungry and they want to solve it. Right. But they're not thinking about the intricacies of every piece of your business. They're not seeing all your posts. They're not seeing everything. And so it's really good to be able to, yes, give people the facts and the figures and the pricing and the details and all the things that they need. But we also can use stories to bring things to life to give more context to things. And that's a great place that influencers come in. User generated content, so UGC. If your clients, I mean, your customers are coming in and they're creating stuff, like they're posting things on your Yelp page or they're, you know, tagging y'all on Instagram and stuff like that. And you just make sure that with both UGC and influencer content, 
you need to get the commercial rights to be able to use these things. This is not what we are talking about, kind of stepping from a free platform to a paid actual commercial thing that we're doing here, right? Like, so if you are running ads, you cannot just take an influencer's content and run an ad without their permission. You have to make sure that you have specifically asked them if it's okay for you to use it for commercial rights. Um, and those, these are kind of, this is, I am not a lawyer. I will pre prefer this by saying I'm not a lawyer. I'm not giving you legal advice. Make sure you talk to someone about make, if you want to use your influencer content, make sure you talk to someone to just make sure that you're within your rights to be able to use it, um, for commercial purposes, like running ads. Um, some other things, some organic social posts. So if you are active on Instagram, you're active on Facebook and you're posting your videos and you're your um you know your posts and all those kinds of things those things could be repurposed just keep in mind the actual principles that we talked about meaning that they have to be actionable and that they actually have to um be compelling right because sometimes if you know if we're just taking something from instagram and it didn't really you know go really well or it fell flat just because it worked there may not mean that it will work for advertising and this is something that i tested a lot when i was at zappos we would take um, in, uh, we would take influencer posts and we would take some uh, organic social media posts. We were working really closely with the organic social media team and we would take some of those posts and run ads with them. But some of them didn't do well. Some of just because an ad, just because somebody posted on Instagram and it got a lot of engagement doesn't mean that it's actually going to drive sales for your business. And so that's why it's important to have a variety of different things. It's important to try, you know, different types of creative, trying videos, trying, um, you know, still images. Um, all of those kinds of things are definitely important to make sure that you're starting to figure out what works for your business. Other things, maybe some lifestyle images from photo shoots. So like if you've done, you know, professional brand photo shoots and stuff like that, those are really good. I have an ad running right now that is just a headshot of me that I took two years ago. I was like, yeah, two years ago, I had braids at the time. <laughs> and now I, you know, don't, but people, but it still converts. And it's from a photo shoot from, you know, last year, two years ago. And so these kinds of so things, images from photo shoots, videos from photo shoots, those are really, really good things to repurpose um, for your ads because they give you really clean, clear shots of your images. It's not required. Let me say that because I don't want you to think that you need to go out and book a photo shoot because we are seeing, you know, less edited, not overly done kind of ads and, and stuff are working really well. Um, so like, you know, for example, I also have some ads running that are just reels of me just talking <laughs> and, you know, those are converting well. They're just sitting here with on my phone, on my laptop. I mean, on my phone, just, you know, using my laptop as a tripod. So, you know, don't go overboard with thinking I need the most highly produced images out there because you actually might find that the influencer posts that are, you know, just shot on somebody's um, iPhone, those customer posts that they're just, you know, shot on, you know, somebody's Android or something like that those kinds of things actually may perform really, really well for you because they look more real, right? They don't, you know, people can, we're in an age, people can really kind of spot things that are overly edited, overly produced, right? And so don't go overboard with it, but images from photo shoots, those are going to be really well because you might have some really clean, good photos that you can use. And then the last one is, is, is video, videos from the business owner. And I will say this, I have a client who argued me down that we were not going to, that a video of her was not going to convert like these other videos. So we had, she's not in a restaurant space, but she had a video of just herself talking to her iPhone. We had a video where she got an editor on like Fiverr or something to add some graphic overlays and add some, you know, kind of um, some, some different things to it to make it look more like a, um, it wasn't an animated video, but it was like a pr produced video. Like it looked like somebody had edited it together. Um, and the video of just her talking always went out. And so don't be afraid to just pull out your phone and just show like, you know, whether it's you walking through your kitchen, kitchen and you're talking to people about the specials that you have, or you're talking about how your food is prepared, um, you know, with, with such care and those kinds of things, or just speaking directly to your customers, those kinds of things also really, really work. And by talking to your customers, I mean, just pulling out the phone and just recording yourself, right? Just talking. Right. You don't have to actually have a video crew come in and record you doing these kinds of things. If you start to see that works for you, then maybe you do want to make that investment. But I always err on the side of test it with the lowest, you know, in the lowest, nicest way you can first. If it works really well, then you can do, go and do a photo shoot or do a video shoot or something like that. But don't just go and invest the money in a video shoot for some for a concept that you don't even you haven't proven out yet. Um, okay, so here is where we're going to go. Um, next thing I want to show you is if you're thinking like, okay, I need some inspiration. So let's talk inspiration. There is an amazing tool within Facebook called the Facebook Ads Library.
And the Facebook ads library is available for anyone who is running ads. So if you are, it's a part of Facebook's uh, trans, uh, page transparency kind of deal where they're trying to be more transparent about who's running ads, who's running ads for whom and stuff like that. Um, and so Facebook's ad library, we should go to facebook.com slash live ad slash library. And there's, um, make sure there's a link in your uh, resource guide linking to this um, because this is a great place where you can see all ads that are running. And so I'm going to show it to you really quick and give you an example. And then we're going to look at some other ads. Y'all, this blew my mind when she showed <laughs> me this. I was like, wait, what? We can see everyone and anyone's ad. As an example, you can do, what is it called? Recon. You can copycat. You can, there's so much. Go ahead, show them. I was like, I'm going to stop talking. Show it. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is the Facebook's ads library and you can even just Google Facebook ads library and it, this will come up. But what you see here um, is what you can do is you can look, look at all the ads that are running. So what you do is you go to category, you just hit all ads. Most of these are Facebook will tell you, like, if you're looking at political ads, ads on like, you know, employment, if you are running employment ads, which is something that you can do, we're not going to cover it in the scope of this presentation. But if you want to look at people's ads that are running about hiring, then you just pick one of these special categories. But otherwise, everything else is going to be under all ads. And so you click that. And then here you can search by keyword or you can search by the advertiser's name. So you can look up your competitors, see if they're running ads. You can look at some other restaurants or things that you, that may be adjacent to what you're doing. And so um, one thing I typed a couple examples here. So let's go. We can talk, go to Yard House. And so Yard House runs ads um, and they have, you know, a variety of different locations and stuff like that. So they can really run ads to specific locations, which, again, we're going to talk about in a sec. But here are all the ads that Yard House is running. You can see exactly, you know, see the copy that they're using. This is what's called, the, this is the body copy here. This is the headline. This is the call to action button. And then this is the image. And so, you know, you can see that they're, they have a, a mix of video ads here. You can see the videos that they're running. Um, you can see some of the call to actions they have are like get directions. So if this is going to pop up and it'll say, oh, it will take you, get you directions directly to that location. Um, you know, they talk about how the different beer that they have. They talk about ha come in for happy hour, stay for dinner. Like they have a, and you, and you'll also want you to notice that they have a variety of ads running, right? Like this, they don't just have one ad that they're banking everything on. They have a lot of different ads running. And some of these are, you know, probably creative tests. Like for example, this image looks to be used in a couple different ads in a couple different ways. And so that's what I mean when I say like, you know, this looks to be an image of a chef or someone who works there, right? So you can use this creative with different headlines, with different call to action buttons within different campaigns, as long as it just makes sense. Um, other examples, let's see, I think Red Robin had some good ones. And so what you do is you just type in, you know, the name of the, and the name of the advertiser and it comes up, um, and it'll just show you all the ads that they have running. You can save searches over here on this top, right? So if you say, you know, you just want to save a, a certain ones, you can do that. See, so, you know, they have different calls, action buttons. This says, you know, on this is promoting a Tuesday special with their bottomless fries. Um, you know, so you can definitely go through all of these $10 Tuesdays. This looks like the biggest thing that they're running is their $10 Tuesdays. Um, so those are different examples. You can even search by just like, you know, category. So if we want to just search restaurant, for example, this may be a little bit broad, um, but you can search, you know, Spanish restaurant. You can search, you know, soul food restaurant. You can search different kinds of, you can search pizza. You can search Italian. So you can do can all you that. Search, kind of soul food. search soul food. Can I search soul food? Sure. Okay. See, so these are all different ads that are running. And again, it's not going to be perfect, right? It's, you know, this looks to be for like a book or something like that. Um, but see how the, it just has soul in there. Um, so that's probably why that came up. But either way, you can take a look through a, a bunch of these. Um, it doesn't like look, soul food has given us a pretty, a little bit of a broad kind of <laughs> um, spectrum here. 
but either way like or this one down here look looks good right like so this is a contact us they have a, just a picture of their food um you know food as good as your grandmother's cooking that kind of thing that's, so it does, that's that's one of ours really yeah yeah, oh, yeah. That's, so cool. <laughs> that's Calvin, awesome is right? this yours I'm trying to see to get it. Can you go back bigger. up? Because it said Mr. Oh, B's. Uh, go up, go Stacey. Up. I'm trying to go up. It's going a little, my computer's going a little slow. Hold on. I went too far. That one right there. Mr. B's Soul Food. That's us. Nice. So you can absolutely, you know, take photos that you've taken of your food, right? So that doesn't have to be overly produced. It doesn't have to be overly edited. It doesn't have to be, you know, something where um, it's, it's it has a lot of graphic overlays and cut scenes, and you know, it doesn't have to be all that, right? Because the goal of the of the food and really this picture is to stop attention. Because what we're going to do is we're still going to read the copy. We're still going to have to go to our contact us button, right? And so all of this stuff works together. So you can, so the Facebook ads library is a really great tool for you to be able to use to kind of get some inspiration. But I do like to caveat this and say, just because something is running does not mean it's converting, right? So just because some, this is all, this just means that an ad is actually running and it's spending money in Facebook's library. It does not mean that this ad, this ad is doing well. It does not mean that this ad is actually driving this person a lot of traffic. I even tell people all the time also, even if you see someone that has a lot of likes, comments, and shares on their posts, on their ads, that doesn't mean that that's actually generating leads for them. They might have set it up completely wrong and they're just you know, getting a bunch of likes, comments, and shares. So just because you see something out there in the, um, in the feed doesn't mean that it's converting. It just means that it just can be a place for you to draw some inspiration from. And I always tell people, don't copy people's stuff, right? Don't copy because you want to make sure it's your own and you know, you've put your own sauce on it, right? So it's, speak in your language. Use the language that your customers use to describe things and to describe your food and your experiences and stuff like that. That's the best place to draw from. It's definitely your testimonials customer reviews and those kinds of things um looks like we have a question go ahead um um a, 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 yes thank you so much um, i am the uh the the new newest member of the mr beast team um i am a part of the business management team actually and mm -hmm. i just had a quick question for you all is there a way to track the metrics of what is converting for the ads that we post Yes, we're actually going to walk through um, a couple of different ways to track that and when we get to the next section. Okay, awesome. Cool. Um, all right, so let's keep moving. Um, another thing I wanted to show y'all also before we moved on was some examples of some really good ads and what they would look like in the newsfeed. So Facebook has one, Facebook always wants us to be successful as advertisers. So they have a lot of different tools, a lot of different help resources and education and all kinds of stuff that you can use to help you. Um, so Facebook's ads library is one. Another thing that they have is they Facebook has these like a business center. So if you go to, um, you know, like any anywhere support, stuff like that, I'll, actually, I'll, I'll put a link to this in your resource guide so that, um, you know how to get here easily because I can't remember exactly what the link is. Um, but what you can do is you can look at their case study. So Facebook has a ton of case studies. And what they do is they segment them by different things. So right here, what I have um, selected is restaurant industry. So they have a lot of different industries here that you can select. If you want to get some inspiration from other ind industries, you can go business size. Um, you can even talk about the types of products that they like. Then these are just Facebook ad products what is what they mean by products, not like food. It's more so like show me video ads, stuff like that. Um, you can even go by region and stuff like that. But <clears throat> this is just based on all just all restaurants. And a couple that I wanted to walk you through were um, I wrote down a couple here that are really good examples. So let's talk about let's look at Wendy's example. <clears throat> And so Wendy's, their whole goal was to get delivery orders. And so what you'll see when you go through their case studies, they give you some high level information about, you know, what 
the, how the, how it did and that kind of stuff, some testimonials. But what you can look at is they all usually put the ad creative in here. And so this is the creative that Wendy's was using. This is a carousel. And so a carousel means you can just show a couple different images or a couple different um, videos all in one. You may have seen carousels before, but you'll see that the it's very simple copy. So this is looks like they're trying to get people to place orders with Grubhub. Um, and so what we, people would do is just click order now and it would take them directly to you know, Grubhub's um, to, to place where they can place an order for Grubhub. Or if people order directly on your website, you can do that as well. Drive people to the place where they can place an order on your website. So you could definitely do something like this if you, for example, want to show di showcase different kinds of food that you may have. Maybe you have images of, you know, fries and you have images of pizza and you have images of, you know, like ribs or something like that, right? And you want to show a variety of things that you offer. You can do that. Um, within a, within um, like carousel types of ads. And you can put videos in here as well. So you can, this could absolutely, this image here of Wendy could absolutely be a video. Like, so you see this technically is a video because it's moving. So you can do stills, you can do videos, all those kinds of things. Another one we're going to look at, um, we're going to look at Sweet Greens. They are, they were running some ads in the Reels placement. So you can absolutely run ads like if you have some reels that you that have done really well, especially like if you have influencer reels that do well that you have the commercial rights for, you can run those as ads as well. So here's one of their videos. And so this one, they're just talking about the different things that they have. Um, you know, it looks like someone someone went in and did these add some graphic overlays, but you don't really need to do all of this, right? They obviously have a big budget for marketing. It looks like to be they like tying different menu items on their different items on their menu to different zodiac signs. Obviously, this must be something that resonates with their customers, right? So they know that they're that you know maybe the zodiac signs or astrology kind of resonates with their type of customer, and so they're using that as something fun. Um, you know, this is another image right here, right? Like of just showing their their setup, showing how they're prepared. If you have videos like this, these definitely do really, really good. And you can just have someone talking in the background because that's what it looks like for this. If someone is just doing a voiceover and talking in the background, it could be you, the business owner. It could be your marketing person, something like that. Um, and again, they put the results and stuff down there. So if you want to take a look deeper into the results, then you can do that. This other one I want to show you is by Shakey's, and they actually did a messenger ad, which I think is also another great place for restaurants to tap into, especially if you are already doing messages via DMs already. So let me show you what it looks like if you run an ad to your messenger. So essentially, this is the ad popping up in Facebook. Um, they have on here, it's all about pizza. It's just giving some inf information about the supersized pizza. They have an offer here, buy one, take one pizza, available with six flavors, order now. See, they have the call to action button. I mean, call to action where they're telling people to go ahead and place the order, send us a message on Facebook. And what they do is this is what happens when you click the ad. So you see the ad popping up and then you see the message that says order via message. And then it, um, let me pa actually pause this so you can see what the message says. Okay, so it's like, okay, how can we help you? Like, you know, they, these are the buttons that the customer gets to choose from. What are your current promos? I'd like to place an order. Or, you know, maybe they have questions about how they can place an order. This is most likely they're using a chat bot to do this, meaning someone is not necessarily sitting there 24 seven, you know, responding to this, but they probably have some kind of automation in place where if someone clicks, I'd like to order now, it's probably gonna take them to their order form. Um, or it's like, what are your current promos? It might populate some kind of, you know, you can populate those things into the chat bot. Um, but if you have more questions about chat bots and stuff like that, then send, just send me an email and I can get you, um, I can point you in the right direction for getting some examples. But this is absolutely possible. If you're someone, if you are taking messages in the DMs or you're taking catering orders in the DMs, for example, is another way that you can do this, where you can have people say like, oh, send us a message and you can ask them, what's your party size? What's this, what's that, right? So you can absolutely collect this information um, via DM. And you can run ads directly to have someone send you the call to action button to be to send you a message. Um, and the last thing we're gonna talk about, is, last one I'm gonna show you on here is KFC's um, promo, which was a very simple, straightforward promo that I think was um, definitely impactful. This 
No, it's this one. Okay. So their goal was to increase in-store visits. Um, and so very simple, straightforward, right? Like, you know, they're talking about a sale that's ending on a specific date. So it's like a sale ends on the 18th. Um, you know, they you can get the uh, the special price, right? So this is a special promo, promo price. They use just a picture of the chicken, all that kind of good stuff. And there is no call to action button here, right? So it's not necessarily a call to action to go fill out a form or send us a DM or do something like that, right? But what you can do is you can say like, show this ad for a special coupon or show this ad for 10% off, bring this ad into the store and show our cashier for an extra 10% off. Right, something like that. Or this could be, you know, an ad only offer where it's like this is only valid if you have this pic have a picture of this offer. So just take a screenshot of it. Something like that, right? So you can absolutely do this to drive traffic to get people to take advantage of promotions um, inside your stores. <clears throat> So um, tools that you can use to create ads. One, Canva is a tool that I always recommend. Um, they have a free version. So the free version is definitely, can definitely get you started. The premium version, I will say, is very well worth the price. Um, I actually just renewed my Canva a couple months ago. And it's one of those tools we use all the time here at my team. Um, and it's something that I recommend for my, for my students who take courses. I've created templates and stuff for them to be able to use. Um, so that they can, you know, go in Canva. But Canva, if you search in there for Facebook ads or Instagram ads or Reels, stuff like that, they do give you some good starting points. Um, but, you know, either way, like having just an image of your beautiful food or your beautiful presentations, those are really, really good and really impactful because remember, you do have this copy here to be able to also explain what you're talking about. So don't think that your image is either going to, you know, make or break your ad because it's really going to be leaning. People are going to see the image. They're going to stop because the image caught their attention. And then they're going to read the copy before they actually go to your landing page or take the action that you want them to take. Um, another tool that you can use is ChatGPT for writing your ad copy. Um, and you also will find prompts in your resource guide that you, that's important. It's in the resource guide part one um, that you can put into chat gpt and it will give you some really good ad copy or at least places to start where you can kind of go in and um add your own um spin on it so okay get back in present mode here so just to touch really quickly stacy on um the the content that you create a lot of times we put a lot of text in the picture um, in the ad. Um, the the simpler the image, the better. Is that correct? Yes, definitely. I think that we are we're in a world where we're seeing, especially like with things like TikTok. Like if you think about TikTok, TikTok is very raw. Like it's very like shoot it right now and post it kind of channel. So it's not a whole lot of over over edits, like, you know, those kinds of things. You have people who do have those big budgets and stuff like that. I can do that. But we're in a place now with marketing where people are craving authenticity and they're craving, you know, to be able to look at something and not feel like this is overly edited or overly produced. So your food and your gifts and your things that you offer speak for themselves. So keep in mind that, again, the the creative, the ad, the, the goal, goal of the creative is really to capture someone's attention to get them to stop scrolling. And you do have all that other real estate with the copy that you can use to explain what you're talking about to get people to want to take the action. But yeah, definitely don't feel like you have to put you know, a whole lot of, you know, things into your ad creative. Um, if you do want resources for getting really good ad creative to get, like if you, there's a service that I just recently partnered with called Penji and they are like, you know, kind of graphic designers on demand where you can like just fill out a form and then they can give you some ideas for, you know, some Facebook ad images or videos. If you want to do like the, with the sweet greens where they did have like little pop-ups, little, text blurbs, you can do those kinds of things, but don't feel like you gotta start there, right? Like I like to tell people, start with what you have, see what the data is telling you, and then take what you have and then make that better. You know, cause like I said, like some of the ads I'm running are from a photo shoot that I did when I didn't even have this kind of hair. So, you know, I'm not gonna stop it from running because I changed my hair, I just, it's performing. So I'm gonna just let it keep running. <laughs> um, but you know, so it's, it's so those kinds of things. Like, get the data. The data will tell you what whether something's working or not. 
um, and then you can take it from there and kind of kick it up a notch if you want to. And you said it was pen p like p e n. Uh, pen. Um, let, me, let me type it in the chat because I think it's spelled p e n j i. Oh yes, thank you, Cynthia. Um, so yeah, so that's where you can go. Facebook has a lot of good information in there about you know case studies, all kinds of things, all kinds of helpful resources in there that'll help you to. Um, get moving. Um, but I think that that's how you spell it, Karina. I will double check if it's a G. It might be P-E-N-G-I. <laughs> um, but it's it. something it's, like that. I got um, it. Yep. I'm going to okay, put it cool. in the chat. Cool. Um, and I might have an affiliate link that might give you like a credit or something. But so let me check because I just enrolled into their affiliate program. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, but I'll make sure that I take a note to send you the to see if there's like a, some kind of credit or something that Pinji's giving away for my listeners. And it's called, um, it says design on demand. Mm -hmm. And then they have a bunch of customers that are like Target and Uber and Lyft and Kohl's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so it should be very accessible for small businesses as well, because it's more so like, you know, instead of having a graphic designer on hand, you're really kind of just like submitting. It's kind of like a SaaS or like a, a software as a service product where you're submitting a creative brief and you're saying this is what I want creatively. And then they're giving you options um, and they should they have a pretty from what I understand, a pretty quick turnaround times. But I'm they gave me some um, a credit and everything to be able to use it. So I have I'm going to be testing out some ads with it myself. Um, and going to be reporting back to see how well they do. Um, but okay, so let's keep moving because we definitely still have a good amount of stuff to get through. So we have reached the end of part one, y'all, <laughs> um, where yeah. this is our pre-launch uh, checklist. So before we're moving on, we want to make sure that you set up your business manager account. You've installed the pixel on your site. You've set up your ad account, which is the things we walked through last week. So if you haven't done those three things, make sure you go back and look at last week's video because that's where I walk you through how to do that. Um, design three to five or two to three different ads. Um, you know, I like to say somewhere between three to five or two to five is good um, because then you want to have options, right? Like if you see something's not working, you try some different things and it really, really just isn't working, don't exhaust yourself. Just turn it off and start something new. <laughs> um, so having a couple different options is good. Um, and then chat GPT, you can use that to write your copy because when we're going into this next section and what we're going to talk about is what you really need to, um, launcher launcher campaigns now that we've had our now that we've created our, our our ad creative we have our copy there's a couple other things that we need to get into before we can actually launch so let's um keep moving all right so campaign launch essentials we talked about our campaign brief and how that is inside of your resource guide and again there is a walkthrough video in there as well so i'm not going to walk through it today but there is a walkthrough video in there um, we have our creative assets. So we have our copy, we have our ad creative. Um, and then what we need is a budget and our audiences. So we're going to talk about budgets and audiences next. So ad budgets. Um, the An ad budget is just the amount of money that Facebook, that you want Facebook to send to show your ads. And so how Facebook charges you is you pay for impressions. So you are essentially paying X cost for a thousand impressions. So for example, if you have a $5 cost per impression, that means that you're paying $5 to get a thousand impressions. And what an impression is, is the amount of times that something is seen. So it doesn't necessarily mean that there are 1000 individual people because you might have someone who's seen your ad two or three times, which is a best practice. People have to see things over and over again uh, before they actually take action on it. So um, that's how Facebook is gonna charge you. And really what impacts the cost of your cost of, of your cost per impression is competition. So the number of other businesses that are competing for that same audience and the seasonality. So the time of year, which also kind of leads in, which also kind of lends to competition because as we, as Facebook's ad platform gets more busy during this Q4 season, costs are higher in Q4 than they are any time of the year. So keep in mind, if you are running ads now and you've, you know, say you've been running ads for a while, you've been having, you know, pretty steady performance with Q4 coming and you may have noticed your ad costs start to creep up as we get closer to Q4. But as we get into Q4, more people are increasing their budget. So there's more competition. There's more people that are jumping into the arena period, like meaning they haven't ad run in ads all year, but they want to run ads this time of year. So costs are high this time of year. And this isn't something that we can necessarily do a whole lot to um, control. Like Facebook is gonna charge what it charges, but things that do help bring your cost down 
are your creative. So if your creative is resonating really, you know, with your audience, that's going to help to lower the cost. Um, if your messaging is really on point, like your copy is really clear and it's really on point and um, those kinds of things help to bring the cost down because what Facebook is seeing is like, oh, this ad is doing really, really well. People are liking it. They're engaging with it. They're taking the desired action. So we're going to lower the cost so that we can, you know, so it can be a little bit more efficient. And Facebook does not give us transparency into how much they charge for things. So it's not like, you know, I can tell you if your audience size is a million versus if your audience size is 10 million, that the price is going to be different by X amount. Facebook does not reveal that kind of data about their algorithm or how they charge people. But this is just how, you know, from what we do know, this is how, how um, what is impacting costs. And what I like to tell people is people are always like, okay, Stacey, what is the minimum budget that I can spend? What do you recommend? So one, I recommend that you always allocate a percentage of your revenue to marketing. Um, marketing costs money and we're all business owners. We know that, right? Marketing is going to cost money. And so what I like to do, and I tell people two different kinds of things. The first thing I tell people is to look at a percentage of, look at your revenue, minus your expenses and all other, your profit and how much you pay yourself and all that kind of good stuff. It, what is the percentage left over that you can allocate to marketing? Right. And because if your market, if you're making a certain amount of money, if you're making like ten thousand dollars a month, for example, or twenty thousand dollars a month, you spending a couple hundred dollars on ads might not actually give you enough data to make an informed decision. But if you are, you know, if you are wanting to just start and you're like, I just want to test. I really don't know yet. I want to kind of, you know, figure out what my baselines are. I typically recommend that people spend somewhere between two hundred and fifty dollars to five hundred dollars a month to start. Because that gives you space. Because if you're thinking about how much we're being charged for cost per impression for a thousand people to see it, if you're paying five dollars for a thousand people to see it, that's really not that many people. If you think about how many people are on, I mean, how many times something can be seen on Facebook, like there are 2.9 billion monthly active users on this website, right? And so a thousand people is really not going to cut it. So if you're spending five dollars a day, that means you're only getting a thousand. Your 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 ad is only being seen a thousand times, a, you know, by a thousand times a day. And that's really, really low. So I like to recommend 250 to 500 a month as a starting point. I like to say that breaks down to about 10 to $15 a day um, because within Facebook, and you'll see in a, in a minute when we jump in, you can charge by um, month or you can charge by, I mean, you can charge by time frame, or you can charge by day. So you can say like, oh, I wanna spend $250 in, you know, in this time frame, or you can say, I wanna spend 10 to $15 a day, or you can say, I wanna spend $50 a day or $100 a day, whatever that is. And so I like to say, like, you know, give yourself $250 to $100 to $500 for about 30-day test to kind of see what your numbers are telling you. Because then when you start to establish your baselines, then you can start to work back to what your budget should be. So if you're saying, like, okay, I've done a test. Let's say, you know, my cost per lead is a dollar, you know, because I've been doing some testing and optimi optimizations and stuff like that. My cost per lead is a dollar. Then if you say, like, I want to get 1,000 new leads, then you can say, okay, my ad budget needs to be about $1,000. Um, but you don't really know that until you start to really kind of test things and establish your baselines. And so that's why I always recommend look at a percentage of your of your you know sales and things like that. And what can you allocate towards marketing? And then on the flip side is if you really just want a number, then two fifty to five hundred dollars a month is a really good um, ad budget to start with. Okay, <clears throat> so that's budgets. Um, and again, we're going to have time for questions in the end. I just want to make sure that I can get through all of this before, um, you know, so that I can show you all the demos and stuff like that. So audiences, the second piece. So we have a budget. So if we were like, okay, you know, our budget's going to be $500 for this first initial test. Now we can move on and figure out what our audiences are. Um, because that's the last piece of what we need before we launch a campaign. So your audiences refer to who you're going to tell Facebook and Instagram to show your ads to. And there are limitations in which you can target. So you can target people by interest, by demographic, by behaviors, and you can target custom audiences. So I'll talk about each of those. The first thing, demographic information, is your age, gender, location, marital status, stuff like that. Um, behaviors are things that like, what are you do? right? Like, are you into fitness? Are you like a fitness junkie? Do you, you know, do you, are you like a parent, right? Are, are the signals that you're sending Facebook kind of showing an indication that you might be a parent, right? Like, so that's what, that's how Facebook is like kind of grouping these different things. Interests are things that like, you know, if you're liking certain pages, so like if you like pages about vegan, um, you know, if you like all the, the vegan food 
places, you know, then Facebook's going to say like, oh, this person's probably vegan if they like, you know, 75 different vegan pages, right? Like, so these, that's how Facebook is really kind of bucket bucketing people. It's based on what they're doing on the platform, things that they're liking, things that they're lingering and looking at too long, um, pages that they're, that they're interacting with. That's really how it's building all of these audience profiles. And then custom audiences, custom audiences are things that are based on, you know, how someone has interacted with your business. So for example, your email list is a custom audience. If someone, if your customer list, people have given you their email address, that is a custom audience. Your website traffic. So like someone coming to your website, you can absolutely make an audience based on anybody who's visited your website within the last 180 days. Um, you can make a custom audience of your Facebook and Instagram followers. So people who engage with you or follow you on Facebook and Instagram. Those are examples of custom audiences. What you cannot target by though, is you cannot target by race. You cannot target by sexual orientation. You cannot target by religion and you can't target by anything that's unowned data. So like, for example, you cannot target people who go to your competitor's website. You cannot target people who are, um, who go to like, who are using Grubhub, right? Like you can't just say, show this to Grubhub users, right? Like you can show it to people who have shown an interest in Grubhub, who like Grubhub, but you can't say like, give me, you know, give me a, show this to only Grubhub's users, um, you know, because you don't own that data. You can only create audiences based on data that you own, which is your email list or your text messaging list or things like that. And so how you select audiences is Facebook recommends keeping your audiences fairly broad after we got through this iOS 14 update that we talked about in the last presentation. So if you didn't see that one, we talked about iOS 14 um, and how that, what kind of changes that caused on the Facebook side for um, data privacy. But what you want to look at is look at the commonalities between your audience. So for example, if you target small business owners, that's a very broad, that's a broad enough target audience that it encompasses people who are showing behaviors on Facebook that they might be a small business owner. People who are into fitness, right? So they're liking all the fitness pages, they're influent, they're interacting with all the fitness influencers, right? So that's telling Facebook this person is interested in fitness. Vegan, that's something that you can also target and say like, show this to people who, have, who Facebook believes are maybe vegan or at least interested in veganism, right? So you don't wanna get too tight with your targeting. You wanna give the algorithm space to breathe. And so what I like to say is that when you're thinking about audiences, you're giving it more so guardrails than you are giving it really like, you know, hard directions and hard, uh, you know, restrictions. So just because even if all your customers are vegan dog moms who have toddlers between the ages of three and five, right? That may be something that you know, and that may be very, that's important for you to know because the way that you speak to them is how you, you should be speaking to them in their language, right? If that person, and, and the way that you do that is with your ad copy or the things that you're sending in your videos. It's not what you do when you're going into Facebook and create and picking technical targets. And we're going to show, I'm going to show you exactly, you know, audience targeting and stuff like that in a second um, when we go into the demo. But Keep that in mind. You don't want to get it super, super tight. Like, you know, one of the things we were talking about before is like, oh, if there's a Beyonce concert in town, should you target people who like Beyonce? And what I would say is instead of targeting people who like Beyonce, just show target your ad to people who are in the area, right? Because if you know there's a bunch of people in the area, you can say like, you know, in your ad copy, okay, you know, okay, ladies, let's get information for these tacos, right? Like you can say that, but you don't necessarily need to tell Facebook to only show this to people who like Beyonce because the technical targeting is just not as accurate anymore because of iOS 14. Um, that kind of like put a bridge, I mean, kind of like put a, a wall between um, what Facebook users are doing on the platform and what they're doing, you know, what their actual interests and stuff are. And so within your resource guide, there are a list of audiences that you can try. <laughs> so don't get a little lost if I'm, you know, kind of throwing these things at you. There's a whole list in there of some things that you can try. So some things that you may want to try are like, targeting, you know, your zip code plus a few adjacent zip codes. So like if you're trying to get foot traffic and you know all your people who visit your store or visit your restaurant live within a 10 mile radius, just target that 10 mile radius. You can blanket that whole that whole section, that whole um, zip code, right? Or that whole area. You can target by city, you can target by state, you can target by, like say if you are in a shopping center with a popular business. So if there's an Orange Theory Fitness nearby, you can say, show this to people who live in this area who like Orange Theory Fitness. Right. Or and who also like Chipotle, you know, so you can do those kinds of things. So if your goal is foot traffic, I recommend you blanket your whole zip code. 
Um, if your goal is to get catering leads, then you want to target your whole delivery area. So like, say, you know, I was talking to someone um, in one of the strategy calls and she was saying that she does deliver to Baltimore and DC and, you know, maybe parts of Virginia. So you can absolutely target those three states or people that are in those three areas, right? So you can get as specific as zip code, or you can get as broad as state, you can get as broad as region. Um, you know, if you have multiple locations in different places and you want to target you know, New York City and California and Texas, you can absolutely do that. So Facebook will absolutely do its best to show only show it to people who are in that area um, based on where they're really where the location is on their phone. Um, and so if you want to get online orders, right, you just pick your target, your local or local area. And so maybe you do want to layer on people who are interested in DoorDash and Grubhub and some of these delivery apps, right? Like you're not targeting their specific customer base, but you can say like, hey, if this person likes Grubhub's page on Facebook or something like that, you know, or, you know, or they show signals that they like Grubhub, then they can do that, right? So you can absolutely target based on interests, like a broader interest, um, plus your local area. You can even you can also target on special occasions. So if someone has an upcoming anniversary within the next thirty days or ninety days, that's an that's a uh, an option that's available. If someone's birthday is coming up, you can absolutely do that, right? And so um, you can target your customer list. You can target lookalikes of your customer list, and we're going to talk about what a lookalike is um, in a second. But there's a lot of options that you have with Facebook, and especially as local businesses, your biggest driver. Um, I would say is making sure that you're targeting within your delivery area or your foot traffic area or whatever area it is that you have that people um, are going to be able to shop with your shop for your products and the shop for you shop your um, restaurant. So again, there's a list in your resource guide, but let's talk, let's go through and I want to show you how to set up a custom audience um, because when you're setting up custom audiences, you do them in a separate place than what you would do when you're building the campaign. And it'll make sense when I show you. So in our Facebook business manager, you see we're in our, we're in our, our back in our business manager that we were in before. Um, what you do is you go to audiences and when you get here, then you're going to see yours might actually just be blank because if you don't have any custom audiences set up, then yours will be blank. Uh, but this is mine and I do have custom audiences in here. So you can see it tells you the audience size um, and that kind of thing. But what you would do if you want to create an, a custom audience is you go to create audience and hit custom audience. And then Facebook's going to give you all these different options. It's going to say, what are, what is the custom audience you're trying to create? And so the main ones that y'all are going to create is your website traffic, your customer list, and maybe people who've engaged with your Facebook page or who likes your Instagram page. Those are typically ones that I'd like to um, recommend. And so um, with your customer list, your customer list has to have a minimum of a thousand people on it before Facebook will actually allow you to run ads to it. So if you have, you know, a couple hundred people on your customer list, you don't need to upload that into Facebook because it's, they're not going to let you use it. But if you have a thousand plus, then you absolutely can export it out of your system um, and upload the list of the email addresses in here. And Facebook does this really, really good job of protecting people's privacies and stuff like that. So it really does try to do a really good job of keeping everybody's information safe. Um, but so with a customer list, what you would do is you um, click select customer list, you hit next, and then you're going to go through these prompts and it's you're going to kind of just look through this to make sure that your Excel spreadsheet or your spreadsheet that you're using to upload this into um, looks, you know, it's just set up correctly. And the main thing that you have to do is just make sure that you include one of the identifiers in the top column. So email address is most likely what you would be using. You also maybe if you use phone numbers, if you have a, you know, SMS. Um, you know, you don't have to include all of this information in here. I'll say that like you can very much just upload lists with only email addresses in it or only phone numbers, right? You don't have to have their first name, their last name, their Facebook ID. Like you don't need all this. These are just options. So it's like it says here, like it include, includes at least one identifier. So you can just upload based on their email list. You can also include a value. So if you are saying like, hey, I, you know, you know how much sales each individual email address has netted for you, you can upload that too, right? And so that way it'll say like, oh, well, this person is a higher, you know, this person spent $100 versus this person only spent $10. So you can start to, so Facebook will start to see like who is a higher value customer. Um, make sure that you understand California's privacy laws. So I know that they just had some, they had some laws kind of like roll out a few years ago that impacted advertising. 
So I would definitely suggest just going through and reading the limits of that use. Uh, maybe you've already heard of it if you live in California or operate in California, but um, you know, so this page is just like a information, right? So what you would do is you just hit next and then you would say, does this include value? So does it include, you know, your customer value data, like the, how much they've spent, yes or no. Um, and then when you get here, then you just upload your list, you give it a name and then you hit next and then you just follow the prompts and you're good to go. Um, but what I do want to show y'all is creating a website audience because this one is one I can do without having a customer list. So if I hit website, let me see if there's any questions. Let me know if there's any questions in the chat or let me know if y'all have any questions. You can drop them in the chat because I'm, I'm kind of jumping back and forth. Um, but website, for example, if I want to select website, if I want to say, hey, give me, I want to make a list of everybody who's visited my website in a certain amount of time. So what you would do is you make sure you select your pixel. And again, we talked about pixels in the last section. If you missed that, you can drill down to everybody who's visited your site, people who went to specific pages. So like if you want to target, make a list of people who have placed an online order before or have gone to your online ordering page, you can say like, you know, specific pages like uh, the URL contains and then you just put what the URL contains in there. You can um, visit by time spent. So if someone been to your website, maybe it takes people two minutes to place an order. Visit by, you know, people who's been there for, you know, all these are by 20 by percentages, right? You know, so like the top 25 percent of the people who spent the most time on your website versus um, those kinds of things. Uh, Willa drills down to the people who are just top five percent who spent the very, very longest. Um, but what I like to do is I just like to do about all website visitors and I usually do mine within the last like 90 days. Um, but you can go up to 180 days and there isn't really a whole lot of nuance between the amount of days. It's just how much traffic your website is getting and how tight of a campaign you want to run. So, for example, when I was at Zappos, we were getting millions and millions and billions of visits a day. So I didn't going back 90 days would just oversaturate that audience. So we were so I would create you know, audiences of people who visited within the last 30 days. Even I would do some that were in within the last 10 days if I want to target people who are, who are, you know, we were running a specific promotion. Um, but I would say your safety zone, you can do 90 days is a really good one to do, 180 days if you're not getting a whole lot of traffic to your site. Um, you just name your audience. I like to name mine, and I'll show you how I name mine in a second. Um, but then you just hit create once the parameters are met. This one I already have an audience of 100 and uh, probably in 90 days. That's probably why it's grayed out. Um, and I just put like 180 days. And then you just hit create and it's going to start to populate that audience for you. Um, what you can also do is create a lookalike of any custom audience that you create. And what a lookalike is, is essentially you telling Facebook like, hey, I have a list of my most engaged customers or I have a customer list of everybody who's bought from me. I want you to create an audience for me of people who have very similar behaviors and attributes as the people on this list. And those are really important and really good because Facebook is going to do its best to find people who are exactly like your customers. So this is especially great if you like, for example, you have a bunch of customers that live in your area. You can create a lookalike of that customer list that you have, and it's going to start to show find more people in that area because you can put constraints on the actual location of where the people are. So, for example, if you're here and you want to create a lookalike, you know, you either can go here and you can hit create lookalike audience, or you can select the uh, a button next to them and then hit um, go to these three little dots here and hit create lookalike. And you just have to select your pixel um, with the, you know, you can do a physical store. So, like, for example, if you um, know if you have a list here of people who have Come into your store. Um, the event source could be a website, stuff like that. Um, you can include purchase value. You can include none of the values, stuff like that. Um, but either way, you kind of just want to make sure you just go through the prompts, um, and then you can um, select the region. So, like, if I want to say, you know, Baltimore, I don't know if I can go to a city, but you probably you can go a state, probably. Or actually, okay, so United States. Okay, so we got to go by country, but when I show you where to put your location constraints on there, then you'll be able to get close to, you'll be able to just only show the people on this list in your area. 
Um, but the percentages are essentially just telling how tight you want Facebook to be with that group. So 1% is the tightest. So it's like show it to people who are like very, very, very closely matched versus 10% is like you can be a little bit looser and get, get people who are kind of, you know, in that audience, but not fully matching every single quality. Um, and so I like to go somewhere between about 2% is a really good one. 1% um, if you are working with a really small list. So if you have a list of like, you know, a thousand people, you might want to keep it really tight because it is going to show you millions of people. So it's not just going to show you like, you know, go your, take your list from 1,000 to 2,000. It's going to take you, you know, it can take you to millions. And you hit create and then you're good to go. So you can create lookalikes off of a lot of different things. I definitely also recommend that you create a custom audience based on who's following you who, or who's interacted with you. So like with your Instagram account, for example, you can say, create an audience of people who have engaged with this web, with this. What I like to do is I like to go to people who have engaged with any post or any ad. So this picks up people who interact with my ads also. So this is the one that I usually always pick. Um, but if it makes sense, like if you want to target people who've only sent you a DM, you can do that. Um, you can do the same thing on Facebook. You would just select Facebook page. So this is a really lookalikes, I think are definitely a really good audience for y'all to use and then layer on some location, but um, that's another good place to go to. Um, okay, so let's keep moving. Now let's look at ads. Let's actually set up an account. We set up an actual um, an actual campaign within Ads Manager. And I want to show y'all what that what that what it looks like and what it means. So the place that you are going to build your campaigns now that so and I like to do all these other pieces first because once I get, my my last step is building the campaign. Once I get here where I'm building. I should have all the information that I need to run this campaign. I should have my creative assets ready. I should have my copy ready. All of that information should be in my campaign brief. So I have my, I usually have my campaign brief pulled up here on the side in another tab and I'm just copying and paste. So that way when I get here, the building piece of it should be the last piece. My custom audiences are already uploaded and added in here. The, like if I want to use a lookalike, that one's already created. So once I get here, the last step is to actually build the campaign. And so the way that you build it is when the way that you get here is you do it in ads manager. So you're in your meta business suite and you go to ads manager. And that brings you here. And well, it brings you to this page here where it says account overview. And then you just go to the part that says campaigns. So once you get to campaigns, then you're just going to hit create. And the first thing Facebook is going to do is going to ask you for an objective. And this is important because Facebook has been able to bucket people into different um, behaviors or different objectives based on their behavior on the platform. So it can tell that someone is more likely to become a lead versus someone who is just more likely to double tap and keep scrolling, meaning they're just going to engage with it versus someone who is more likely to make a purchase. And so that's really what these objectives all correlate to is to what is the actual end result that you want to happen. The objectives that I recommend y'all stick with are one, awareness leads if you want catering leads or stuff like that then you would go with leads um or sales if you are and this is sales if you are placing if you're this is you're doing online sales so like if you're trying to get online orders stuff like that you may want to go for sales but for the sake of this demo we're going to set up an awareness campaign um and some and when you select different objectives they do the campaign build does change a little bit but for the most part it's pretty similar and the prompts are going to help you to get through it. I always like when I create a campaign, I always tell Facebook to let me do it manually because it will sometimes ask you like, oh, do you want the, you know, the truncated version of creating this? And I say, no, just give me the full build and that way I can do it myself. So we're going to select awareness. And like I said, when you see over here, you point to these different things, it'll tell you over here on this side what it's most likely good for. So you'll see awareness is good for store location awareness. Um, and so that's why we're going to use this awareness objective. If you want leads, meaning you want someone to fill out a form, you want someone to send you a DM, something like that, you are going to use leads. Um, and then again, if you want to place online orders, you can place sales. If you have an app, you can absolutely, you know, connect your app to this and you can run ads. Like if you take orders in your app or something, and this is your app, not Grubhub, like not an app that you don't own. You can only connect like your app specifically to this website. Um, so you, so it's not like you can just connect it to Grubhub and, and that'll, that'll do that. But let's go with building an awareness campaign. So we're going to select awareness and we're going to hit continue. Thank you. 
<clears throat> okay, so here's what we have. Whenever we create an ad, we have a campaign level, we have an ad set level, and we have an ad level. The campaign level is really kind of the high level umbrella of what you're trying to do. So um, this, for example, you want to make sure you change the names and stuff like that. And I like to, if you can see over here, I like to name mine pretty descriptive. So that way I can look at it and see exactly what it is. I don't need to go through the, 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 the details and see what the campaign is. I like to say like, you know, if I'm doing a webinar, a workshop, that's what it's for. That's what it's for. So if, let's say if we're doing like, you know, Thanksgiving promotion, like we can say Thanksgiving you know, catering orders. And I also like to put dates on mine too. So that way I know just for internal purposes of like, when did I actually launch this? So I know like, you know, if there's a campaign from July that's been converting really well. That's something that I like to know. Um, so special categories, you do not have to worry about special categories unless you're running employment ads or like, you know, I mean, I don't think that you'll be running any credit ads or housing or political ads, but that's the only thing that I can really kind of see that may end up getting into your wheelhouse is like, if you're running employment ads, you do have to select that as a special category. But anything else that doesn't relate to credit, employment, housing, or politics, you're fine to just skip this and just leave this as is. This, again, we also want to leave this as is. The auction is essentially just saying that it's going to be, you know, that's just the type of way that Facebook's going to buy it. You, there are other options, but auction is what you want to stay at. This is the objective that we just selected. Um, a B test. I don't do a whole lot of A B testing with Facebook specific build. You can, like, if you have two different options for ad for creative and you want to run a specific split test, a split test means it's going to show one ad to 50% of people and it's going to show another ad to another group of people of the same size and it's going to figure out which one performs the best. But there's a way for you to look at that without having to run Facebook split test um, feature. So this is where you want to, you know, you can kind of just live, leave that alone. Advanced campaign budget, That the way that Facebook handles budgets is either you can um, set your budget on the campaign level or you can set it on the, ad, on the audience level, which is an ad set level. So if you have two different audiences running, then you want to use advanced campaign budget, um, campaign budget. If you only have one running, you don't need to turn this on. So for now, for this purposes, we're just going to leave that as is. But um, if you hit on, all you do is you select daily budget or lifetime budget, and then you select the, the number here. Um, and then that's all you have to worry about. But if this is not on and you're only running one audience, for example, like if you're just going to blanket your whole zip code, then you can just run just one audience. Stacy, really question that really quick question. That A B test, is that an extra charge no. to run? Okay. It's just more so just telling Facebook to just like show this one ad to 50% of the people and then do a holdout of people who don't see it. like it's kind of just a technical like. It's just more of a technical thing. Um, but OK, so ad set name. So then I, this is the audience level. So this here is where we're going to be selecting our audience and we're going to put our budget and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we'll just say, like, let's say like this is like, you know, Baltimore. Um, let's say Baltimore vegans. So, um, you know, I like, like I said, I like to name things so that way I can just know exactly what it is. Um, even if I'm putting like age constraints on here, I will put age constraints in here. Like I'll say Baltimore Vegans 25 to 54, you know, something like that. So that way I know exactly who this audience is. The performance goal is maximum reach of ads. So this is just going to show it to as many people as possible. Um, maximum number of impressions means it's going to show it to the same people over and over and over again. Ad recall, you don't have to worry about ad recall. Ad recall is just more of a technical thing like split testing. But mo mostly what you're going to be doing is maximum reach of ads. Um, you select your Facebook page. So if you're, you know, have different pages, you can make sure that you select the right one that you want it to run from. Um, beta control, you don't have to worry about beta control. You just kind of skip that. Dynamic creative, I don't use dynamic creative, so you can just skip that. Um, here's the budgeting section. So as I mentioned, you can run daily budgets or you can run lifetime budgets. And so a daily budget, you know, if we're going to do $15 a day, we can just change it to $15 a day. And you'll start to see these numbers start to shift and change as we do things. And I'll explain them as we're doing that. Another thing you might want to do is a lifetime budget. So if you're saying like, hey, I only want to spend $350 for, you know, 30 days. So, or like, you know, I want to spend $350 until the end of this month, right? Like you can change the dates and times and stuff right here. This just means like this pops up sometimes um, 
because of the like now it's 445 so now it's in and my campaign can't start in the past so you just hit restart <laughs> um if it does Stacey, sorry stacy could we like pilot this really quick um so we're giving them a hundred dollars to mm -hmm pilot an ad so what would that look like what would you recommend do they do the lifetime budget and just put a hundred dollars there and run it for a week or do they do uh, what was the other one uh daily i like the to daily. so i personally like daily budgets better than i like lifetime budgets because daily budgets i can find that are a little bit more flexible so like if i'm saying like you know i'm spending five dollars right now and then i see the performance is doing re really well then I can up this to, you know, $6 or $7. Um, and I find it is a little bit easier to do the math when you are doing daily budgets. If you're doing lifetime budgets and you're saying like, hey, I want to increase the budget today, you know, it's, you can't really, because something's doing really well today, then it's not going to let you do that. Um, so, so I recommend I daily budgets. But when, but to answer your question, what is going to happen is what people, when, when y'all apply that credit, when you put the, the credit card that um, Karina is giving you on your account, what it's going to do is Facebook is going to charge that first. Once that runs out of money, then it's going to go to your backup payment method. Oh, yeah. So it's going to say, like, it'll say, you know, they will. I think that they will let you keep running for a little while. So even if it like hits exactly a hundred, and it's like, it, it should keep your ads running, but it's going to send you alerts that says your payment has been declined, or Facebook tried to charge your tried to charge your um, card and it was declined. You need you need to update your payment method eventually it will shut off like if you go a week past where it's saying your thing is declined and you're you need to update your payment then it's going to turn your ads off until you actually go in and update your payment method but um here the budget is where like if you want to only spend that 100 like you say like i want to spend 100 dollars in a week um you can absolutely do that like you can just say like that's you know lifetime spend 100 dollars, put the constraints on there and it'll facebook will spend whatever you put here within the time frame. So if you put $5,000 here and you wanted to spend it in a week, it's going to try its damnedest to spend $5,000 in a week. Um, and so just keep in mind that the budget piece of it is what, and, and the way that Facebook charges your card is they're going to charge you in increments. So when you're mm -hmm. first starting out, I believe that once you hit $75, they're going to charge your card. Um, and then like, you know, eventually you'll get to a point where it's like a $250 threshold. So it'll charge you every 250 bucks you spend. Um, or sometimes it'll charge you on a specific day of the month. Like it'll say it charges you on the fifth of the month every month. Um, and the way that you kind of really figure that out is just go to billing. So over here, there's a section that says billing. Um, and when you go to billing, that is where you can add your credit card. You can add the card that Karina is giving y'all and that will, it'll charge that first. But then once it tries to charge that card and that those funds are, you know, gone, then it's going to send you an alert saying you need to put a, ba a backup payment method in there. Does that um, answer your question? Yeah. So right now, let's say that hundred dollars. If we do five dollars a day, that would be twenty days. So mm -hmm. if you were to set it from September twenty fifth, what would that be? Till October fifth ish, something like that. Maybe a little, maybe the seventh or eighth. If there are thirty one days in a month or thirty days. Um, so you can, I would say you can definitely do it. The 14th, that way. October but, 14th would be yeah, 20. So days. if you are saying like, but here's the thing, if you think about it, like, if this campaign is doing really well uh -huh. and you don't want it to turn off, it's, it's going to turn off on that day specifically. Uh -huh. So if you just want to be able to use Karina's dollars first, what I would recommend is putting her, putting the card she gives you on file first. Once you get that notification that says, Hey, your payment is declined. You need to update your payment method. Then you switch it over to your card. Got it. So then do that, right? Do the daily budget, $5, put the start date, the end date. Don't do the lifetime at $100. You can if you want to. That's what I'm saying. Like I like I recommend using daily budgets more so because of the flexibility. Um, how Facebook's going to charge you is it's just going to charge whatever card it has on file regardless okay. of how much you spend. Um, it's just going to charge it at increments. So you may, so that for that hundred dollars, like you may see a charge on it that says fifteen dollars from Facebook, and then you'll see another charge that says twenty five dollars from Facebook. Mm -hmm. But once it gets to that point where it's gonna, where the funds are gone, and it starts to send the signal to Facebook that this card is declining, that's when Facebook is going to send you an alert as the advertiser saying, "Hey, your card is declining. You need to update this payment method." Okay, so, so then going there, you just update. So then if if they don't want to continue with the ad, how do they shut it off? 
Um, you the way that you turn it off, if you want to turn anything off, um, um, you see this little off on off switch right here. That's how you turn something off. So like if I were to click this button, like you see how these down here are grayed out. These are been, these have been turned off. Got it. Okay. So you can turn anything on and off at any time, regardless of even if you just started um, and it hasn't spent that whole hundred dollars yet, you can turn anything off. The fate, the, the the billing part of it is gonna, they're gonna charge you based on this whole ad account. So if you have like six ads running and that hundred dollars is gonna charge you on the increments, regardless of how many campaigns you run. So okay. like, for example, for me, like two campaigns running right now, um, and it just charges me now. I'm at a threshold of 250. So every time Facebook gets 250, every time my account gets hit for 250, that's when they charge my card. Okay. Um, okay. So we might actually have to pull this into um, one more. I might, or, or I can, we can talk about Karina if you want me to do just a video with the last few sections. Because um, I have a few minutes that I can go over, but I, I want to respect everybody's time. Um, because I definitely want to show you all, finish showing you all how to set this up. Um, but then I wanted to also show you reporting and how to understand what these different numbers mean. And so those are the two things I want to make sure I get through today. Um, so I can keep going and we can then, you know, break for questions and that way we can, um, or I can re finish recording this and send y'all a recording of this. Whatever the consensus is, if you guys want to see reporting and just see a little glimpse of that, we could do that. Or she can finish just a hands up. I have a question. This is Nancy. Uh -huh. So with all of this being said, has Facebook implemented the AI for all of this to be done on its own or no? No, they have not. Okay. I think when that they will eventually get to a point where they do build an AI for like ad copy and stuff like that. Um, maybe you might eventually get to a point where you can do that, where you can tell Facebook to build you a complete campaign, but at this moment, you can't do that. Yeah, when that's do you think happen. they'll come up with it? I think that that's probably something that's far down the road. Cause I don't think that Facebook, I, I think that Facebook wants still wants people to kind of jump in here and do this because mm -hmm. what Facebook doesn't want is for you to say, I built a campaign with all AI and it tanked and it was Facebook's fault. Mm -hmm. Because wow. they built a campaign that tanked. <laughs> I think that that's. I think that they want to avoid that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. I think I could see them saying like, "Hey, like you know, we have a like a chat GPT integration where it's like, oh, you can give you, we can you can put in some prompts and we'll give you some ad copy or we'll give you some images and stuff like that." But I don't see us getting to a point where it's going to completely take over the build for you or like where AI is going to completely take over the build for you. Because mm -hmm. I would think that if I have a campaign already and then I put it up that they would actually do all of this thing, everything that you broke down. Like if I say, okay, here's a hundred dollars, then it would, the machine, the AI would be like, great, this would be the best audience for you. Done. Yeah. I mean, it's good. Yeah. It may, it'll, it'll definitely like, you'll get, Facebook's going to recommend a bunch of stuff for you. Once you get a campaign launch, it'll say, oh, mm -hmm. here's, you can do this to make it better. You can do this to make it better. So there are those kinds of things in there. It's just not at a point where it's going to build the whole campaign for you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so if I I can go to I would say probably if I'm if y'all can stick around to about five fifteen ish five twenty, then we could probably get through everything. But I can just kind of move through this quickly and then just save the the rest of the questions for the end. Since this is recorded, I I would just suggest we just keep going. Um, mm -hmm. and those that need to drop off can because it is recorded and they can, um, they can replay it if yeah. they need yeah okay cool so let's keep going okay so we're on our audience level right okay so we have our name of our audience here we've picked we want maximum number of reach we've given it a budget so we've decided um you know that we're going to run this and if you and if you don't select an end date it's just going to keep going until you turn it off so this is just going to this just means it's going to be an ongoing campaign it's just going to keep going until you turn it off um, or if you're like, hey, I want to run something for, you know, let's say you want to start an ad on October 1st, 1st and have it run all the way through, you know, three days before Thanksgiving, then you can do that. So one thing you want to keep in mind for your Q4 kind of campaigns are your cutoff times. So if you're trying to get catering orders and you have to have, you know, your catering orders finalized a week before Thanksgiving, then you want to make sure your ads have been turned off, you know, in that time frame as well. Um, if you are running a time sensitive promotion, for example, like, 
you know, um, if you're running a Black Friday special or a Cyber Monday special, then those are the times when you definitely want to make sure that you set dates. Um, even if like, you know, for me, when I was running, I was doing a live webinar on September 19th. And so I had ads running all the way up to 10 minutes before that webinar started because it was just digital, right? Like people would just sign up and they'd get the aut they'd automatically get a link to join. So I could have that running all the way up till right before I started. Um, you know, and so those so time frame when you want things to end really just depends on your campaign and what you're doing. But if you have this unselected, then it's just going to keep running until you turn it off. Um, and then so here is where we're gonna where we're gonna select our audiences. So you have a couple different options when it comes to audiences. You have custom audiences. So this is where we're pulling from all of those custom audiences that we created, like your email list, your lookalikes in here all of that kind of stuff, right? These are where you would pull from those custom audiences. So if I want to say my my site visitors from the last 90 days, I would select that. And then Facebook's over here, they're going to give you a definition. For custom audiences, sometimes it's just going to say that it's unavailable because it's hard for it to estimate, you know, how many people are on that list exactly. Um, so it, for custom audiences, it usually says unavailable. Um, but then you have this here, Advantage Custom Audience. This is a fairly new feature that Facebook is delivering. And it'll say, reach people beyond your custom audience when it's likely to improve performance. I don't like to turn that on because when I'm building my Facebook ads, I want a clean read on what's working and what's not working. And if I tell Facebook that you can reach beyond my existing customer list whenever you feel like it to improve performance, then for me, I don't know, is it my customer list that's doing well or is it Facebook, you know, the people that Facebook is reaching beyond the, you know, who this audience is. And so that's why I don't like to use this button here because I want to say like if I'm showing ads to people who visited my site, only show ads to people who visited my site. Don't show it to people who are similar to people who visited my site. Um, you can also add your lookalikes in here, for example. So like if you have a lookalike audience, this is where you would also pull it in. And you see they break it down like, you know, lookalikes versus custom audiences and stuff like that. So you can see, you know, which ones you can use and that kind of stuff. If it's great, if it's grayed out, that means it's not available for you to use. So I'll go back to the audience section to figure out what's going on there and see why it's not available. Locations, this is where y'all are gonna definitely make sure you live. Um, Facebook is gonna default to the United States or wherever you're living at. If you're in Canada, it's gonna de default to Canada or something like that. But what you do is you just hit edit. <clears throat> and here is we can go all the way down to, um, like it says here, you can type in country, states, and regions, cities, postal codes, DMAs, you know, districts, all that kind of stuff. So if I just wanna say Baltimore, Maryland, um oh here we go so i can do the city you can even drill into cities within baltimore so like beltsville is in baltimore ellicott city is a city is like a you know a region within baltimore so you can type in like your zip code for example if you just want to target this specific zip code so you can select it and it'll just show you um you know, like when it'll just really kind of drill into that. And this audience definition should start to update, right? So you can see this is the amount of people in that area. Um, so you can add more zip codes on there if you want, you know, um, that kind of thing. So um, you can exclude any places. Like if you have any places where you're like, hey, like, you know, I want to show it in Baltimore, but not Owens Mills, you know, something like that, you can do that. But uh, most of the time, what you would do is just select the ones that you do want to show. So, um, you know, well, let's change this just back to Baltimore. And you can add m multiple in here. So like, we'll, let's see, you know, we'll do the Baltimore, Maryland, and then we'll do like, and then you can pick the radius here also, which is another good thing. So look, if you know you saw the Baltimore area plus, you know, five to 10 miles out, you can do that. You can even go all the way up to 50 miles. Um, and then, you know, but it'll default as 25 and then let's just put Washington, DC. Okay. So you can, so you definitely want to make sure that you put your location constraints on your ads. And so that's how you do it. And again, you can include, um, multiple cities and it'll just, you know, change the, change the estimated audience size here. 
Um, and for your local businesses, typically I would say uh, there isn't like a hard and fast amount of people that I would recommend because you are a local business. So like if your area, if you only, you know, people are just walking to your location and there's, you know, 50,000 people in that area, then that's a good amount. For, that's a good number for you, right? Like I wouldn't say you need to increase your audience size to a million just to say, just for the sake of saying I need a million people in my audience. Um, so use your discretion with with this. Trust that yeah, you know who your customers are and where they're at. If they're walking to your location, then you want to make sure that you're just targeting that zip code and stuff like that. But um, you know, so use your best judgment with your location and based on your campaign. If you are doing a catering order, for example, and you can saw and you can serve, you know, Baltimore, DC, Virginia, then that's fine. You can do Baltimore, DC, Virginia, right? So you would just pick your pick your delivery areas and stuff like that. Um, other things you can do is you change my age. Um, so with Facebook, you any if you target anybody under the age of 18, I believe that there are different like special things you have to agree to. Like you can't, you have to agree to not show kids like, you know, certain kinds of ads. But as long as you're going 18 plus, you're fine. Um, but either way, like if you know that all of your customers are between the age of 25 and 54, then you know, pick 25 to 54. Like if you know that you barely have anybody coming in your store that's under the age of 25, then that's fine for you to go ahead and for you go ahead and do that. Or maybe even go into 24, 23, because you want to capture people who haven't, you know, maybe they have a late birthday or something like that. Um, so you can definitely use your age um, targeting demographic to help. If 65 plus is the highest that like, you know, if you want to do, you can go up to 64, or if you want to target, you know, then you're just 65 plus, right? Like, so you can't target someone who's 70. You can target someone who's within the 65 plus range. And that would include someone who's 70. So there are a little bit of a constraints, but you can, you know, there's a pretty wide net that you can cast here that you can go up to, you know, certain ages. You can do genders. So, and you can, I mean, the genders that are specifically just noted within Facebook, right? So there is no, um, there isn't an option for anyone who does not identify as a man, uh, as men or women. So you would just have to pick all if you want to just encompass everybody within Facebook. But if you know that most of the people that come into your store are women, or you know that most of the people who are placing order with orders with you are men, then you definitely want to make sure that you select men or women. Um, and then here is when we get to the detailed targeting. This is where you can um, absolutely start to learn more, of, where you can start to layer on more interests. So um, you can layer in like, you know, people who are vegan. And what it'll do is it'll say like, okay, who you'll see where it says here, it says interest. And you can absolutely also see the estimated audience size. And this is the estimated audience size just based on everybody on Facebook. It's not necessarily within your location constraints until like once you select it, then you'll start to see over here is where it's populating, you know, the your exact audience size. So it's estimating that, you know, people between 18 to 25 that are all, you know, both um, that fit into all genders, and are interested in veganism that live in this area is 527,000 to 621,000, right? So this is where it's telling you your specific audience size based on all the constraints that you've put on here. Um, I definitely would recommend like best, well, best practice here is to, if you're gonna use a custom audience, let the custom audience be the only thing that you're targeting, plus like your location and your age and your gender. I do not recommend that you layer on custom audiences with detailed targeting because what's going to happen is if you put your like if you put your audience constraints in here like let's say you know target people who visited my site within the last 90 days all of this is going to be layered so that audience size is going to get very very it might actually just say it's not available um because yeah it's unavailable because it's just so small right because this is essentially saying target all of my site visitors that live in Baltimore Washington DC that are between the ages of 18 and 65 that are also you know within all genders and they also are vegan or they're interested in veganism um so i definitely recommend that you use one audience one ad set for the custom audiences and another ad set for your interest targeting um, another thing that I would say is a best practice is making sure that these, uh, if you're using multiple audiences, like you're using multiple ad sets, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, um, then you just make sure that they're similar in size. Because what's going to happen is if you have an audience size that's 500K and you have another audience that's 5 million, because the audience of 5 million has a bigger pool to, to bigger, a wider net to cast, it's, it's going to send most of the budget to the audience that has 5 million people. 
So I like to say, and this is a note that is in your resource guide also, I like to create, if I'm creating a campaign with my custom audiences, I will have one campaign with custom audiences, completely separate, its own budget. And then I have other campaigns that are running for interest groups. Um, and I keep those interest groups in a uh, similar size. Um, and if that doesn't make any sense, let me know, because there is a, I hope that makes sense, um, that, you know, you want to make sure that your audiences are similar in size. And because your custom audiences typically might be smaller, you want to keep them in their own campaign so that it does get a fair shot of the budget. So like if you're saying like, hey, I want to spend $15 a day max, you have one campaign that's you're targeting your warm audience for $5 a day. You have another campaign that's targeting your broad interest for $10 a day. And that gives you that total budget of $15 a day. So you can play around with your budgets to make sure that each of your campaigns get them gets enough spend. But let's just say, you know, we're doing Baltimore begins and we're not doing any custom audiences. So we can do that. And then what also is cool is that you can search for stuff. And so like, if you're not sure if something is going to come up, you can search for it here. You can also space. So it's also going to give you suggestions. So like if you type in veganism and you select that, it's also going to give you some of these other, you know, ideas and interests and things like that based on um, this topic up here, but then also based on your account specifically. Like, for example, you're seeing like, you know, MailChimp, Buffer, Constant Contact, those pop up because those are audiences that I typically target for my account. Um, and so, you know, just to explain what that is, but either way, all of these kind of relate to veganism. Um, you can do things like um, fitness, you know, you can target Orange, uh, Orange Theory is not available on here, but I think Planet Fitness is. Yeah, so you can target people, but you want to make sure that if you're targeting Planet Fitness, for example, take a look over here because employers, meaning this is anybody who's listed that they work for Planet Fitness. But if you want people who are just interested in it, you make sure you pick interests. Other things that you can target, if you hit browse, you'll see that you can break this down into different things. So another one that may be relevant for you is people who just moved away from their hometown. Like, you know, like I've moved, I lived in Las Vegas for a while when I was in Baltimore. I'm from Baltimore, but I lived in Vegas for a while. And so you would see on my profile or Facebook would know that I moved because I listed that I, you know, my hometown is Baltimore, but I live in Las Vegas. So you can target people who are away from home, their hometown. Like say they've just moved there and they need to figure out where all the good places to eat are. Like I had to just stumble upon it myself and just figure it out, right? You know, you can run ads for people who have anniversaries that are coming up, birthdays that are coming up. If you, for example, you know, you want to target newlyweds, so you can do that. You can target people who are parents. So, you know, all parents. So you can do parents with people who with kids who are certain ages. So like if you know your restaurant caters to parents who have kids that are five to eight years old, you can do that, you know. But that's something that if you, if you know that for sure, right? Like if you know that your people come in with only kids that are between six and eight, then this is fine. But if you know that they come in and their kids are, you know, a, a wide variety, like they are, sometimes they're two-year-olds, sometimes they're 12-year-olds, you can just put parents, right? So you don't have to drill into each of these. You can really just kind of go with parents. Um, this is really kind of for if you want to target, like if you want to target newborn, people, parents of newborns, for example, maybe you have some kind of special, you know, for moms um, with newborns. You know, so this is all of this kind of relates to your campaign. So that's why when we take the time to set up our campaign brief first, that gives us all of our objectives and what we're trying to do, our campaign, you know, all the direction of the campaign. So that when I come in here, all I'm doing is just bringing that campaign brief to life because I've already, I already know who my targets are and stuff like that. So you can play around with this to really kind of figure out where people are at. You can target by high, by income, you know, if they live in high, high, you know, high net worth in, income uh, or high net worth, um, you know, zip code, stuff like that. Yes, um, there is the campaign brief is actually inside of your resource guide. And there is also a walkthrough video in there as well that walks you through how to how to fill it out. Um, and so you'll you'll definitely get that as well. Um, languages, this is something like, you know, if you want to target specific languages and this languages indicates the language that they have selected on their Facebook account. So if you know someone speaks French, you know, to the, throughout their household, but their listed in, um, their listed language is in English on their Facebook page, then you're going to exclude them. They're not going to see this. So be a little careful when you're selecting languages, because understand that the language is based on what they have programmed their Facebook um, account to be. And I say this because I have clients who, like, for example, they, a lot of their um, staff are bilingual. 
Um, and so we don't know whether their indicated language on Facebook is in French or if it's in English or if it's in Spanish or, you know, whatever the language is. Um, but we just know that they're bilingual. So we wouldn't, so I wouldn't se select anything here. I would leave this as all languages. Um, and then just kind of leave that there. So that's audiences. Like, so this really, there's a list, a whole list of different audiences that you can pick from um, within your ads manager. I mean, within your resource guide that gives you some ideas to start with. But again, like, you know, you want to make sure you're giving, think about guardrails, right? Like not specific, like you don't have to go in here and say vegan moms who are, have toddlers between the age of 18 and 25, right? Like you don't need to do that. You really just need to give it guardrails. So if you know your people are parents, that's a really good guardrail, right? Like if you know your people are vegans, that's a really good guardrail. You don't have to put any of this here also, right? Like you can literally just target, just blanket your whole location with your age demographics, um, and you will be absolutely be able to, to, to still reach people who, are, who fit within your target market, right? So the biggest thing I would say is make sure that you're really good and you're really tight on your locations. Um, and then if you want to layer in detail targeting, you can, because if you're like, say, creating a campaign for vegans, for example, that might be something that you want to put in here. Um, okay, so placements, going to quickly go over this because I want to make sure that we get to the audience level. Uh, I mean, so to the ad level, this just means where you want it to show on Facebook. So if you hit manual placements, what you'll see pop up is a list of all the places that could potentially show on Facebook. So the feed, your Instagram stories, in store, you know, in stream. I like to just do automatic placements, advantage or advantage, advantage plus placements. This is what Facebook recommends because it wants you to say like, hey, I'll let their algorithm figure out where to place it. But let's say you only want to run an ad on, on Instagram, for example. You can do that. Like you can unselect Facebook, you can unselect audiences, and it can only run on Instagram. Like if you know that you get all your business on Instagram, that's fine. You know, you can absolutely do that. But Keep in mind that just because that you don't like Facebook does not mean your customers don't like Facebook, right? Because that's sometimes what happens is we, people will get on Instagram and they're doing a lot of marketing on Instagram and they think their customers are not on Facebook also. But they may also absolutely be Facebook users and they get on Facebook, but just because you don't doesn't mean that your customers don't. So I like to say, like I either use all Advantage Plus placements to just let Facebook decide or sometimes I'll say I only wanted to show in the feed and on Instagram stories because I know some of these other placements may not convert for me um, because I, I've tested it and know that. You can run ads only to Messenger. So like if you want to run ads to your DMs, you know, you want to make sure that Messenger is selected. Um, so that's really kind of placements where, you know, I like I said, I like to just use Advantage Plus placements and just let Facebook decide. It doesn't have to be get, get complicated. But if you do you know, specifically want to do that, then you can. All right. And so then we're going to hit next and then we're going to build an, we're going to build an ad um, or I'm going to show you how you build your ad. So you think about, you have your three layers, you have um, your campaign level, your audience level, and now this is what is the creative look like. So this is where you're going to upload your images, add your copy, all that kind of good stuff. And so Again, I like to name this something very specific <laughs> so that way I know exactly what it is. Um, and so I would say something like, um, maybe I would I would name this maybe just like, you know, flyer for, uh, flyer number one for Thanksgiving promotion, something like that, or buy two, you know, buy one, get one free promotion, um, still image, something like that. So I would name it so that way I know exactly what it is, because what you're going to see is you're going to see a list of ads <laughs> in some of these other places. Why did this publish? What's going on here? Okay. I think I accidentally published this by accident. Either way, it's not that big of a deal. I'll just turn it, I'll just turn it off. <laughs> um, so sorry about that. I didn't mean to hit publish. Okay, I'm just waiting for it to load. So over here on the right side is where you see what your ads look like as you add different, you know, stuff. So um, what you'll see here is you can select the format. So you can select single image or video. You can select, or you can select carousel. I don't think that you'll be using collections too much. So don't worry about collections. Um, but still images or video are mostly what you're gonna be using. Carousel just means it's going to change the format to the carousel format, meaning you can upload a lot of different, um, you know, different images in one ad. But for the sake of time, um, we're just going to do 
single image or video. Um, Multi-advertiser ads, you can record, you can leave that on, that's fine. Um, and so this is where we are gonna actually add our, uh, our images and videos and stuff like that. So you'll see this here, this is add media. And you can hit add image or you can hit add video. Um, I'm going to add a, let's just, we'll do a video. And then here, what you're seeing is pulling up is all of the images from, I mean, all the videos from my account. So you can upload video images and videos here by just hitting upload and then you just go through the standard process of just finding, you know, where that where it is on your computer and it'll upload. Um, it also pulls in some of your Instagram videos. So like, you know, if I just want to pull something from Instagram, then I can just select one of these. Um, these are all the different ads and stuff that I have, um, all the different ad creative that I've uploaded into my account. So all of yours would look like your account, right? Um, so let's just say we're going to select. Stacy. so if they had like, say their content on their desktop or, um, in a downloads folder, so they would click the upload, right? Yes. So you and just hit upload, upload. Mm -hmm. to your computer. Okay. Yeah. So if you hit upload, it'll, you'll see it just pops up like a standard little, uh, little box that just says, find the image. So just like you would find just with anything you're uploading. Um, you select it and then you hit up open and it'll upload it for you. Um, and I'm just going to use the one that I already have uploaded just for the sake of time. So here we go. So we'll use that one. And then here, the, Facebook has some editing tools in here. So if you need to edit your stuff, you can definitely edit it. So if you need to trim, so like sometimes like if you are recording yourself and you hit start, you know, you can trim out that little bit. You can just, you know, move it here or something. Um, you can trim off the end. You can mute the video if you want. Um, you can, this is showing the different placements that it's going to be available. So like this is the stories. This is the feed. Um, your ads have to be sized correctly. And in your reference guide, there is a list of the ad sizes. When you do, that's one of the benefits of using Canva is that if you use Canva, you can tell it what size you want something to be and it'll make it that size so that you can make sure everything is, is in line with um with this um and so then you can like play it you can crop you can do all these kinds of stuff you can add captions in another place if you want to add captions um you know what you do i'll show you how to add captions real quick um but this is just going to take a minute to upload or to upload to like kind of just pull in So on the right hand side, that's just giving you a preview of what it looks like on the feed in a story. Yeah, absolutely. Got it. Mm -hmm. So then you can you can click different placements and that'll make it that'll pull it up here. This is it defaults just as a Facebook feed. Um, but you know, so you can you can definitely select the different ones. Sometimes if honestly I turn ad preview off because I feel like it slows it down. So like, cause it'll, every time you make any change, it'll update this. So like, even if you like go in to change a period, then it'll like refresh this whole thing. So sometimes if I'm just like trying to be quick and I just don't want it to slow me down, I will just, you know, you can hit, hit this little toggle and it'll turn the ad preview off. And then I add the stuff and then I'll turn it back on when I'm ready to take a look at it. But I always make sure I take a look at it so that way I can see how it's, um, how it's coming through. If you need to add captions to anything or you need to make any edits, you just hit this little edit group right here. You hit okay. And then you have a whole lot of stuff you can do in here. You can hit, you know, you can crop it, you can add the captions. So when you hit add captions, it'll just say, do you want to auto generate the captions or do you want to type them yourself or something like that? So auto generate actually works really well. You just need to sometimes have to go through it and just update some of the words um like and for example like it always spells my name wrong it always puts an e in my name so like i always go through and i correct those kind of things can but we for see the most part it's pretty accurate can we see what auto generate looks like uh this one might already have captions on it for sure yeah so this one already has captions on there but um here we go if i if you were if this was fresh you would just hit auto generate 
and then this is what it would look like. So you'll see your video here, and then this is all your text. And then so I could go through and I could just like, you know, change this. And then it'll, when it comes up on the video, it should, it'll show like that. I just muted it so that it wouldn't. And isn't there like data about um, captions that uh, you get more engagement through captions because most people have their phone on mute? Yes, definitely. So if you are like saying something, doing like a voiceover in your videos, then you definitely want to make sure that you add captions because most people do like what Facebook used to tell us is that you want to optimize like plan. You want to plan as if somebody is not listening to the sound. So make sure that everything that needs to be compelled can be, you know, that needs to come across can come across in the ad or the copy um, without having sound. But if you do have sound, then you definitely want to make sure that you add captions. So um, it's definitely, and, and it's a great, that's one of the great things about having this built-in tool is that you don't need to go outside and get a, like a separate transcribing tool. You can just upload that raw footage in here and then you go hit captions and you can, you know, type these out for yourself. And then you just hit save and it'll just be saved to this video forever. So like you saw how mine was already saved on here. See, like it says save to video because I, you know, it was saved on September 8th when I uploaded this. So, you know, like... Once you add it once, you'll be good. It'll just save it to that exact same file. But if you have multiple videos, then you got to do it for multiple videos. So just keep that in mind too. But either way, it's very, very, very easy tools. Some basic edits kind of stuff that you can do in here. Um, okay, so then now we have our image and our video or something in there. Then this is the primary text. This is the body copy. So this is the copy that's all the way up here. And this can get, you know, you can get a little long with this. I definitely wouldn't recommend that you make it like, you know, somebody's reading a paper, um, like, you know, like a reading an essay, <laughs> like don't make it that long. But um, with the chat GPT prompts that has some uh, character limits in there about like keep this around a thousand characters or something like that. So, um, you know, there, there are some kind of uh, nuances there but it's not a hard there is no hard and fast rule that's like oh if it's over a thousand characters then it's going to tank um just communicate what you need to communicate like use the framework that we walked through the the hot ads framework um that's that and then here you want to select add a destination if this is not selected already because what you can do with an awareness campaign is you can either take the you can turn the call to action button off so there is no call to action button so like for example if like um if like when we were talking about with the KFC ad, how they were saying like, you know, buy, you know, get this promotion by bringing in the, bringing in a copy of this ad, you don't need a call to action button, right? Because you're not sending anybody anywhere. But if you are sending people somewhere, like you are sending them to your website um, or you are sending them to, you know, um, DMs or something like that, you want to make sure that there is a destination on there. Mm -hmm. Let's delete. Now I'm going to turn, I'm going to, this is going, it's, sometimes it goes a little slow. <laughs> so um, you'll see here when it, when it starts, when it finishes previewing and updating that there is no um, call to action button. This whole thing down here is just going to be gone. See, so without there as a destination, you can just run just your ad with this copy. But if you are sending them to some place, like you are saying like, hey, I want you to fill out a form or I want you to send me, a, um, you know, to go to my website and look at the menu or something like that. Then you want to make sure that there isn't a destination in there. And with the destination, um, this will give it a second to pop up. What you get is you get a hot headline and you get a call to action button. Um, and this is still is still populating because the call to action button should be down there somewhere. Um, here with the destination, what you want to do is put website. Instant experience, we're not going to cover instant experience for the sake of this training, um, and it's not necessarily something that you need to do. Um, this is where you would just type your website URL. So like the actual destination of where you want to send people to, this is where you type that at. The display link is just means like, say like if you, if you're, um, say you changed your name, right? Say that your website is, 
you know, stacysrestaurant.com, but you rebranded to, um, you know, like, I don't know, theplantrestaurant.com, right? Or like your name is now called The Plant Restaurant. So you can change this and say like theplantrestaurant.com to your actual name. Or if you have a really, really, you know, long URL that doesn't include your name in it, like maybe you're using a third party service and it doesn't have your actual, you're not sending people to your actual, like your own website, like your stacyzeal.co. Um, you can type what you wanted to show there, but that's not necessarily something that's required or it's not going to make or break your ad performance. Um, but let me just type this in here so that it'll, this will disappear. All these little alerts, you'll see like alerts and stuff kind of just popping up. Um, and it usually will do a good job of telling you what's going on or like what's causing the problem. Um, and so once you fix it, then it goes away. Um, so yeah, so that's the, um, so here you'll see, right, like now we do have to go ahead and add our headline. We have body, you know, options here. So your headline would be what you're seeing right here where it says marketing consultant. Um, let's say we're, you know, let's see, one of the things we need to stop eating. I was going to say stop eating junk. We're, we're trying to <laughs> Something like that, right? In your headlines, use chat GPT. This is just something I just made up really quickly for the sake of this um, argument. I mean, for the sake of this um, this demo. But what you'll see, what I wanted to show you is you'll see your headline pops up here. This is where the headline is. This is where the body gets. So the primary, primary text, what this says here, that's at the top. The headline is the one that's at the bottom. This description is something that goes right underneath of this headline. So if you just want to say, you know, free promo, or a free coupon or something like that. When, what I would use at Zappos all the time was free shipping. Um, so something like that. Like this is just very secondary, unnecessary, you know, secondary information that you may just want to add in there and you'll see it shows up down here. Um, it's not it's kind of cut off a little bit on my screen, but when it's running, you would see that. And then the last thing we'll talk about is call to action buttons. So Facebook has built in call to action buttons. So you can't necessarily, you know, pick your, you know, if you want something different than this, you're just going to have to pick one of these. But what I tell people is to pick something that is as closest to the destination, to, to what you want them to take as possible. So some ones that might apply to y'all are see the menu. Like if you want to drive traffic to your menu, um, sign up. If you want people to sign up, like say, hey, give me your email address and I'll give you a 20% off discount. You know, sign up, meaning that they would sign up for, to get the, to get the coupon. Um send a message, like if you're sending people to uh, Messenger, you can send people to Messenger with a lead generation campaign, with the, uh, the objection has to be leads. So, and you, you'll see that when you're building your campaigns and you're selecting your objective, the one that says lead says, if you want to drive this to Messenger, that's the one you would use. So you wouldn't use the awareness, you would use lead generation if you wanna get messages. Um, but then there's also one here that says get directions. So like if you wanna send people directions to your actual, to your actual place, um, let me see what happens if, when we select get directions. Um, so then, yeah, then you can just put your street address in here, right? So like, if you just want people to get the, uh, <clears throat> information to the closest place, then you just hit, you hit edit and you just add your home at, you add your street address in there and that'll give people directions to this specific address. Um, so yeah, so the, the call to action buttons just to get as close as possible, Send a message is another good one, right? Like, you know, if you want to send, you know, people to contact you, you can send a message on, you know, via messenger or something like that. Um, you know, so these are all just definitely important to just understand that you can't, you don't have a whole lot of control over these. Facebook just makes these, you know, they create the ones that they want us to be able to use. Um, so yeah, so then you just hit publish or like when you scroll down here, you just want to make sure that with the tracking, you can track offline events. And if you set up your um, conversion events and all that kind of stuff in accordance with what's in the resource guide, then you should be able to see this stuff here. Um, URL parameters, there is, they are essentially like, if you know what UTM codes are, they're essentially what a UTM code is. You can assign tracking to specific links too. So that way, when you look at your Google Analytics, if you are using Google Analytics, which you should definitely be doing on your site, um, then you can actually see like, okay, this traffic is coming through, this specific traffic came from a paid Facebook ad versus this other traffic came from an organic social post, you know, stuff like that. So uh, we're not gonna go too deep into what URL parameters are for this, for the sake of this, but they're definitely something that if you're sending people to your website, you definitely want to make sure that you 
are understanding how to how to do that. And Google has a free tool. If you just Google 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 URL builder, <laughs> then you'll be able to find it. Um, but yeah, so then you just hit publish. Um, and then when you hit publish, it's just gonna go through and update, you know, send you, it's gonna push the campaign out live. Um, and what happens when something hits publish is it goes under review. So your ads are not gonna get shown right, right away. It's gonna be in review. And what Facebook is gonna do is they're gonna check to make sure that everything's all good. It's not violating any policies, um, all that kind of stuff. But um, the review process can take maybe up to 24 hours if you're just starting out. When you're, the more you run ads, you're not gonna be, it's, it's gonna take, it's gonna be faster. Um, so you see here how this just changed the processing. That's essentially just means like, hey, like, you know, we're taking a look at what's going on here to, to, to approve it or not approve it. Um, if you want to turn anything off again, because I'm going to turn this off because this is I don't want this to run. You just hit this little button here and it's just going to turn it off. Um, but yeah, so that's how you build an actual campaign. So again, go back through this recording and watch and see where I'm explaining what each different things mean as you come when you complete your campaign brief. That's what one of the things I love about that is that I just pull my copy straight from there. You know, so I write my copy in there and then I copy and paste. So once I get to this step, I've already had my campaign brief filled out so that way I know exactly what I'm doing. And then you just kind of go in here and then you build it. Um, you also want to be making sure that you're looking at your numbers. And so this is a place that you can look at your numbers as far as like what actually is happening with performance. Um, you can look at things on the campaign level, the ad set level and the ad level. So like, for example, if I want to look at um, this retargeting campaign here, I could select this checkbox next to it and then I can go to ad sets and it'll only show me the ad sets or the audiences that I'm running this particular ad to. And it'll show me the numbers based on that. And then, you know, I can go to ads and this is when it'll show me based on each individual ad that I put in here, um, what you can do. Like what, you know, what the performance is um, based on that, like, like what the click through rates are, all that kind of good stuff. So that way you can kind of understand, you know, which ads are performing the best. Another place that I like to go is to reporting. So if you go to the little um, all tools button here and you go to ads reporting, I already have this tab pulled up for the sake of um, my computer loading slow sometimes. Um, so it'll take you to this tab right here that says ads reporting um, when it actually finally loads. So for those of you that are still here, thank you. Um, go ahead and look at the polls. There's three questions. Please fill those out. Um, just wanted to get your all's feedback. Yeah, definitely. Okay, um, okay, so we have create report here. And so this is where you can create custom reports based on um, you know what you want to see. So I'm going to, so there is in your workbook, there is a list of all the different kind of metrics that you should pull. And I do actually also even have in here a list of metrics that are uh, important versus metrics that are not important. So vanity metrics versus money metrics. And so follower count is a vanity metric, meaning it's not a big indicator about success of your ad campaigns or your overall performance on social. Um, engagement is not something that we want to necessarily worry too much about when we're thinking about ads because Ad, engagement just means some likes, comments, shares. I don't care if I'm if I'm running ads. I really don't care how many people like it. I don't care how many people shared it. I just want people to go to the landing page, or I want people to come in. I want people to send me a message. I want to know how many people took the desired action. Um, and then video views is another one. Like it doesn't necessarily matter how many people are looking at the video, um, it, depending on how you're setting your campaigns up and the testing and stuff that you're doing. But it's not really a big indicator of perform of success for video views. But the things that do are your click-through rate. So your click-through rate is essentially how many people saw it versus how many people clicked on it. And that is what you're measuring when you're thinking about creative performance. So an average click-through rate is 1%. When you are running your ads, you're aiming to get a click-through rate of at least 1%. And if your click-through rate is not 1%, so like if you're looking at your um campaigns right now for example 
if I'm taking a live campaign that I'm actually running and I'm looking at these click through rates, 0.29% is very, very low. So I'm probably going to turn this one off um, later on today when I go into optimize my ads. I haven't done that this week yet. Um, this one probably going to get cut off too, because it's like, it's not get it's not generating, you know, the click through rate that these are. Um, but even if I, instead of turning it off, what I can do is I can go in and edit a headline. So if you are finding that your click-through rates are uh, below 1%, instead of going and changing the creative, like the actual image or the the video, what I would recommend you do is update a headline and update your body copy. Because I actually just had a campaign where this happened to me. I was running some ads for a webinar that I was doing. The click-through rate was terrible. And then I went back through and I was like, okay, which ones are actually performing the best? What What, what is the numbers telling me is performing um, the best? And so I saw that there was a particular headline that was doing a lot better on some of the other ads. So I took that headline and I just updated the other ads um, and it actually definitely helped performance. So definitely make sure that you are looking at your click-through rates because that's an indicator of whether the audiences that you're running the ad to is responding to that particular ad. The next thing that you want to look at is your conversion rate. And so your conversion rate is how many out of the people who clicked on it how many of those people actually converted? So like if you're running a lead generation campaign, if you're trying to get catering orders and you see that, you know, you have a 5% conversion rate, that means 5% of the people who clicked on that ad actually took the desired action that you want. And so this is an indicator of whether the audience you're targeting actually cares, actually cares about the offer that you have. So like if you're not running an ad to a website, or a messenger, then you're not necessarily going to be looking at conversion rate. You would be looking at how many people came into your stores versus how many people actually, you know, clicked on your ads or saw your ads or stuff like that. Um, but if you're thinking about, you know, for lead generation campaigns, if you're trying to get catering orders, your conversion rate would be out of the people who clicked on it, how many people actually became an actual lead? So like how many people actually filled out the form and actually gave me their contact information? That's a conversion rate. Um, the conversion is always based on the actual desired action that you want people to take. And then other other important metrics, cost per acquisition. So like your cost per purchase, or your cost per lead. Um, so how much are you paying to acquire a lead? And then the last indicator is your return on ad spend or your or your ROI. So like how many people, like how, what, what was the revenue that I got out of this, out, you know, out, uh, minus the actual revenue, the ad, the budget that I spent on the ads. So it's really kind of calculating ROI. So th these are the really the top, perform the, the main metrics that I look at when I'm looking at campaign performance is the click through rate at least 1% is the conversion rate you know what are the conversion rates and your conversion rates are going to vary based on you know your business type and your you know what you're kind of trying to get done so there isn't really necessarily a, a, a baseline that I can really give you that's an average because your your conversion rate might be up as a 50% all right like you might see that 50% of the people who are filling out your form or who are going to your, you know, looking at your landing page are filling out your form. So it could be something as high as 50% or 75% or 90%, whatever that may be. Um, or it can be, you know, somewhere between one and 2%, in which case, if you have a 2% conversion rate, you might be actually doing a volume play, meaning that like you're getting a whole lot of volume so that 2% makes sense. So there isn't a hard and fast for the conversion rate. Um, you know, return on ad spend, this is going to be like, you know, a 1x or a 2x or a 5x, something like that. So it's like, are you making at least your money back? Meaning if you're getting a 1x, you're getting at least your money back. A 2x means you're making double your money. So what you're putting in, you're getting two times back. And so all of these metrics, you know, I definitely are, I go into this a little bit more exhaustive in my course and stuff like that. So I definitely wanted to uh, give you all some high level insights on the metrics that matter. But for, and for the sake of time, you know, just making sure that we got that. But as reporting, this is where you can create custom reports that will actually show your numbers. And so I'll go into my report and because in your resource guide, there is a list of the metrics that you'll want to use to set this up. So you just hit create report and just add the metrics in there. So um, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. But what a setup report actually looks like is um, it looks kind of like a pivot table where it's going to show you, it's going to be able to slice data based on different parameters that you set. So um, let me actually just like let this load up before I keep talking. Let me see, are there any other questions in the chat? Okay. And child, two minutes we, and we are done, I promise. <laughs> 
Um, okay. Okay. So this is, so essentially it looks like a pivot table where you can have all of this different data sliced by all these different metrics over here. And so, as I mentioned in your resource guide, you'll see how to set this up, like how to get these columns to be with the most important metrics. Um, but these are the metrics that I look at. Like you can break down your campaign by weekly performance. Um, but if we take, if you select things here, then you can, it'll just kind of slice this around. So if we just want to see high level, like how campaigns are doing within this date range, we can do that. Like I can see like, okay, this ad set has gotten this many impressions. Um, or this ad has got this ad, this audience has gotten this many leads. I can slice it into creative. Um, you know, like if I add hit add on there, it'll slice everything down even more. So we can see like on each individual level, like all rolled up, but then you can see breakdown by each ad. Um, then you can also even um, show all these different metrics. So let me go to the others. We show like it, you can also figure out like what channels are my ads performing the best on? This is another something that people are usually interested in. It's something that I look at. So you can say like which age range, you know, perform, you know, gives me the best um, indicator. So if you see like, I from my data, I see that most of my people are between the ages of 25 to 54. So I target people between the tw age 25 to 54. Um, you can do by gender, you can do business locations, you can do um, country region. So you can break this down by, uh, by region. So like if I were to put, you know, region on here, it would break all of this data down based on different regions. Um, so like, you know, if you're running all of your stuff in one place, then, you know, you don't really necessarily need to worry too much about that. But then what I did want to show you is you can break this down by platform and placements. So platform is like, is it Instagram? Is it Facebook? Or Facebook also has an audience network that it runs at, and which is kind of like a display network if you run Google ads before. Um, so I can see like, you know, my performance on Facebook versus my performance on Instagram. I can see my um, performance based on placement. So like, how did it do on Facebook reels versus, you know, Instagram reels? How did it do on stories versus, you know, in Facebook stories versus Instagram stories? So you can really slice into this to get a really good picture of how your ads are performing. Um, on the other side, you see metrics. So if you want to pull in different types of metrics, you can definitely do that. Like if I hit, you know, reach, for example, which reach just means how many people saw it individually, not impressions is how many times reaches how many people. So I can see, you know, I can add different numbers in here. I can unselect them. Um, all that kind of stuff. You have a ton of like, you know, data in here that you can really kind of go through. And, instead, you know, instead of letting it get overwhelming, I gave you in this, um, in the actual resource guide, the amount, like what different numbers you want to pull in here to make a clear picture of what you have going on. Um, so I know somebody earlier had a question about where to look at numbers. You can look at numbers here in the reporting section, or you can look at it in ads manager right next to each of the different ads that you have running. Um, and that's pretty much it, y'all. I have some additional resources in your resource guide about how to avoid getting hacked. Um, I have a video in there that, that shows you through how to spot a phishing email, which is a, a phishing email is essentially someone trying to fish for information. Like most of the time, if you've gotten hacked before, then they probably, you probably responded to a phishing email. Um, and so there's a dem there's a video in there on how to spot that within your like Gmail account or your, your Google account or your Outlook or whatever you're using for, for email. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much what I have. I know I went through that last piece kind of fast. But any oops, any questions or thoughts or anything that we want to go through before we shut down? Questions, comments, concerns. I know this is a lot of information. The good thing, again, it is recorded and you can go back to it. I'll try my best to do timestamps also to where each section kind of begins. But um, yeah, we'll open it up to, to questions. Anyone, Nathan? Um, <clears throat> you all also still have uh, the opportunity to book a one-on-one -on -one with Stacy. If any of this, you know, you want more clarity on, or if you want her to walk you through your individual account um, as well, or any issues. I, I know there was one 
person, I don't know if they're still on here, that were still having um, issues with their ad manager account. But again, this is a resource for you all to, to have. Um, the, the guide will be sent out with the recap, but any questions, comments, concerns? All right, everyone's an expert. <laughs> A quick question, uh, the pixel is on this video or the last video? Because I, for some reason, uh, was it the you last expert, which, I'm sorry, I cut out for a second. Which part did you, were the, you asking? The pixel, was it on the first video? Or oh, yeah, pixel is in the first part, yeah. First video. Well, if there are no questions, um, you know, I can... Close down, but yeah, like Karina said, like definitely make sure you know watch the watch the recording because um, a lot of that stuff, like when you're building a campaign, it's just about understanding what each and what those individual things mean, and then trust yourself to make the best decision, right? Like this is not something that you're going to come out of the gate and be like an expert in, right? Like this took me a very long time, a lot of ad campaigns, working directly with Facebook to be able to get to the point where I can you know, quickly kind of see what's going on or build things or know what stuff means. So be easy on yourself and just let yourself, you know, get get through the information and kind of re take a look at the workbooks again. Um, look at the resource guys, look at the videos again. Because again, the more you start to do it, the, the easier it's going to get, the more you're going to start to understand what different things mean. And honestly, you're not going to know how something performs until you start. There's a lot, there've been a lot of times when I was think like, okay, this campaign is gonna hit it out the park. This is a no brainer. This thing is gonna do so well. And it did not, <laughs> okay? So, and there are times when I thought this is really not gonna perform. This is gonna, this is gonna tank. I hate this creative. And it performed really, really well. So all I say that to say, start, get something up, get something, use the ad credit that you have with Karina, make sure you're following the best practices so that you can, you know, get a clean read on what's working and what's not working. But this is not a process that you're going to do it once, hit it, get um, and have your ads running, and it's just going to not hit it out the park, right? You're going to have to be able to kind of jump in here, do some, you know, do some learning, looking at the information, understanding how things met, how things work. There are maybe some things in here that you may that you you know may have missed or things that we couldn't cover for time's sake, and so I'll do my best to make sure that anything in the resource guide and any questions that anybody may have that are common, I can definitely make sure I send them to Karina to answer any questions and stuff like that that may come up. But um, you know, my biggest thing is you got to start. Once you start and you start to see all the data that you get, all the information that comes in, then you're going to be like, wow, this moves a lot faster than organic. You're going to get a lot more data than organic marketing for sure. So um, definitely get in there, get started, and start to see what the algorithm start to see what the numbers are telling you as far as what's performing. My biggest thing is do more of what's performing and do less of what's not. So very simple, straightforward. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, Stacy. That was so so great. You are an amazing expert, and um, kudos Absolutely. to you. Kudos to you for all, all of your work. I see Mike over there. No, yeah, well, you know, my grandkid is one of my biggest promoters on Facebook and FaceTime. <laughs> I've been teaching him how to DJ back in my system here since the age of five. Say hello, Ezra. Yeah, so Ezra's the face, you know, the future face of Kacharis. So uh, yeah. uh, I'm trying to teach him how to do things, but uh, he's still, you know, three he'll years be old. your marketing expert. I'm yeah. sure. Sooner or later, right, Papa? <laughs> True story. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for, for staying. And um, if you could just take the quick poll, there's three questions. And uh, again, Stacy, thank you. Thank you so much for, for guiding us step by step. And, um, and we hope to see you soon. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Thanks, y'all, for having me. I'm, I love to teach this stuff. So, again, any questions, please feel free to let me know. Um, and I'll do my best to, answer, to get you some answers. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, y'all. Bye.